This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Very Hard to Submit. Go to VHTSNY.com and check out their kimonos, compression gear, and apparel. This is a brand we are excited to be supported by. Their gear is high quality with a clean design. Go to VHTSNY.com and see for yourself. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Grappler Union Podcast. On this episode, we have Tiago Vega in studio. Tiago is a third degree black belt under Hickson Gracie and the owner of LCCT Barrington. Enjoy. You told me, using any technique that works, never to limit myself to one style. Keep an open mind. We're not here to take part, we're here to take over. In order to become more peaceful, in order for you to become better, and, and strategize your life. Oh, a beautiful thing. Back from World Masters. Yeah, yeah. How'd that go, Hav? Well, not as well as I hoped. What happened, Hav? <laughs> I was watching your match, and I was like, what, what the fuck did he do? What oh, happened? Yeah, you, so I was you, watching it. Yeah, everyone watching from home has basically hit me up. Maybe it was just the camera angle. I, mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen it uh, on flow. It hit me up with, like, how did you lose? <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, so well, uh, I saw the penalty, and I, I thought he motioned thumb inside the pant leg. Yeah, my well, uh, fingers inside the pant leg. I oh, believe is fingers. what it was. I, I gripped low on the pants in a pass attempt, All right. and my hand rolled up in. Okay, okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I think it was actually that my. I don't think it was my thumb had just dri <clears throat> drifted in. I get, I guess I got to look at it myself, honestly. Wow. But yeah, I didn't like. I wasn't trying to. I, you know, like okay. I'm aware that you're not supposed to put anything up in the cuff of the pants. It so wasn't like an you, ignorance you were, you were, of the rules. You were just grab, like yeah, you had I, four fingers inside. Yeah, I think yeah. I, oh, I, think oh, I rotated four was, fingers oh. inside. <clears throat> is is oh, what wow. happened. Uh, and there's no warning. Jay just penalty you right there away. There was no warning. No, they, they just, don't do warning. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but even even at that point, so like that didn't like totally rattle me or anything. I'm just like, ah, damn it, you know, right, like right. now nah, I really got to finish this guy. Right. Um, because, like, that was my first time of getting a penalty in IBJJF. And yeah, I, last I, time we just got DQ'd. Yeah, I just got straight exactly. DQ'd. So, um, so no, like, hold on. <laughs> hold on. He was there. I'm he there coaching there. him, okay? Yes. And then I, I know the referee, and he started doing some the illegal move. This is last year? Yes, yes. the last year. And, but the guy was forcing him to do it, and then I'm, no. No, Javi, go back. <laughs> no, don't go. Go back. Go well, back. I, I believe the exact instruction was open your legs and play your game. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Like, but this is my game. I'm going to leg lock him. Right, right. <laughs> he was forcing you to cross. Yeah, but I mean, like. <sighs> but I, I'm, it, I was right. warning you because the coming, referee yeah. looks at, you know, this way. You know, he looks at me and I was like. Okay, I know the eye. He's right. gonna disqualify him. Right. I'm like, dude, open your guard. I wish you know Portuguese. You know <laughs> what I mean? So I can scream in Portuguese. One day, one day maybe. <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, it's living and learning. I think. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, like last year was a good experience. Yes. You know, um, it, this year was just like I, I'm really kicking myself for for that because even even with that penalty. You know, I was up two advantages to one right. for most of the match. Right. And then in the last, I think it was four seconds. Yeah. In the last four seconds, he locked in a collar choke that was on my mouth. Well, it was, didn't look very tight. No, it wasn't. And oh. if, if the people at home could see, like it was on my jaw and right. it jammed my teeth into my mouth enough. They gave me advantage it, for that. That it cut my, my lip. And like there was no choke, like, like no, there was no, choke. there was no threat of a choke. It was it was uncomfortable. Yeah, of course. You know? But yeah, like you're not going to break my jaw like that. Right. You're not going to choke me like that. But he did go for something, and that's why I gave him the advantage. Right. And in the like, in the last seconds of it, like there wasn't in my mind like an opportunity. Like he's not choking me, so I'm just going to sit here and take it. You know, kind of. A th and right, it, yeah, right. it's just. I know. Yeah, it was just. 
like he he went for a hail mary and it went his way. It did. Yeah, he got that advantage for that. So yeah, so that so that advantage tied up the score and the penalty. Yeah, the penalty. And I lost on the penalty. Yeah. So, and like I said, just absolutely kicking myself that, you know, like that was just my bad. You know, on, like I was watching those matches leading up to it, and those all those guys looked very very good. Right, and uh, um, I can't remember his last name. Ryan from Valco yes. actually ended up taking the division. The guy that the, the the guy that beat me ended up getting to the silver medal, uh, okay. getting the silver medal in the division. Okay, so uh, yeah, he was yeah. tall. I was kind of worried because he was. He wasn't that tall, was he? Uh, he looked taller than you. A well, lot. everyone looks taller. I mean, he's very. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taller than Javi. <laughs> <laughs> he had very long legs for sure. Like I was a little worried about because he was going high guard on you. I'm like, oh shit, is it going to get throw up that triangle? I mean, I I, I work a lot of triangle defense. Oh, good. I know. I, know. <laughs> I joke around about not knowing how to do triangles or defend them and whatnot. I. I do actually know how I to know. do them and I defend them. Do. But it makes me nervous. I cause. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I've been triangled enough that I, I, I figured it's worth the valuable skill to learn. But, so, uh, yeah, so uh, but that was time. yeah that, 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 was, that was my hurrah. Um, went out there with a couple of members of the squad. And um, let's see, uh, Brian Krantz, uh, Celeste, Celeste uh, Jordan Dolan. Mm -hmm. uh, Jordan actually... So Jordan's a really, really interesting story. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we should get him on the podcast. So last year, he did Masters World. Masters 7 or 6 last year? 6 on a blue belt. Yeah, Masters he, 6 is a blue he belt. He ended up finishing, win three matches mm -hmm. and won the Worlds. Yeah. And he's with division. Correct. So in this year, he's like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, he asked my brother, Hey, can I go to the woods at the purple belt? It's, you know, I won last year in the blue. And Luis is like, we, we're we going to test you on the end of the year. But, you know, let, yeah, let's go. Let's see how do, how do you do. We're not expecting, you know, a lot. But doing then, won the woods in the purple, being in the blue, mm -hmm. and one weight division above his. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because there was nobody on his division. I see. So he went up one. And he went up one. And not a small dude, mind you, like Jordan's. No. He yeah. He has a job. He works out every day. <laughs> yes. Dude has six pack at 60 years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, nice. Jordan. <clears throat> Jordan is like the epitome of of old man strength. <laughs> you know, like, um, in fact, he they got a picture of him up on Flow Grappling. Oh, it was really? pretty cool. Yeah, nice. yeah. So he did great. <laughs> really proud of him. A lot of people did good. Maneko, Maneko, five times now. Yeah, yeah. No, Amazing. Maneko did awesome. Um, Samuel Super Braga. Nice guy. I saw one. Super nice guy, Maneko. I like him. Super good referee. One of the best. Yeah. I like when he referee my fights. You know, everybody makes mistake when you referee. I don't think they're perfect. No. You know, we got to understand that. <clears throat> uh, you know, Hickson always says when uh, when we used to go to compete, like, when you go to compete, everything is against you. It's not just your opponent. You know, you got to put it on your head. The referee, it's against you, too. So that pushes you more to try to finish that fight. How many fights we lost by decision, you know? And um, I think today it's a little more professional. It's a little better. But back in the times, it used to be like, oh, you know, I'm the referee. I don't like this. This is cool too much. I like right. more this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's raise this right. guy arm. Um, but I think the sports is in, it's on a very good point right now very professional good referees they still make mistakes but we gotta we have to understand that things happens really fast right. you know and um sometimes today i don't think they do per purpose they make mistakes and you gotta you gotta be able to to recover from that and try to win the fight you know and hickson has this mentality of uh finish right right it's hard it's super hard it, 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 it's it's not for everybody right sometimes i used to have five six matches at the worlds at the pan at the state and back in the time 
you you used to qualify for the worlds to fight at the worlds in any belt oh really right yeah now, now so, we just do it for black belts yes in 2099 2001 2002 three four you used to qualify <clears throat> how if you won the state in brazil you qualify for the world if you won pan ams first second and third you qualify if you were the brasileiro in brazil first second and third you qualify and if you win the wars the last year you already qualify for the next because you're like a returning first champion. second right. third and third so <clears throat> when i used to compete at the world's adult so you look at your bracket it's like just champions right. just the second place in the pan ams the second place at the brasileiro the first second or third or third at the world's last year you know right, what i mean right, it was right. no easy bracket no. Mm -hmm. i used to look at my bracket i'm like holy shit oh crap <laughs> like, just, a, just a bracket full of killers <clears throat> exactly just champions you know and it was super hard but you know i try to do this hickson finish you know because you you keep involved your jiu-jitsu right you know and in 2005 as a black belt i got my black belt in 2002 july when i won the woods as a brown belt <clears throat> and that year at the brown belt i i won 16 tournaments without getting not even an advantage on me so wow. i beat the crap of everybody <laughs> I don't call a perfect year because I don't finish everybody, uh -huh. but it was almost there. <laughs> right, right. And then I was just one year as a brown belt because I was Pan Am champion, world champion, state, Brasileiro, you know, and all the others, the, we used to have like um, um, five states and the, the number one state champion, okay? <clears throat> And if you win the five states, from the five, if you win three, so you qualify for the worlds. So what I used to do is I used to fight all five to take everybody's chances <laughs> to qualify. It's one less fight. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's one less fight. Right. And those dudes in my, my division used to hate me because <laughs> they see me as over there already qualified. And they're like, what the fuck you doing here? Right. I'm like, oh, I'm taking your name out of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I'm winning this and, shit. And this was at what weight? Rooster, right? Rooster, yeah. yeah. The picture I showed you. Uh -huh. I used to get up at 4.30 in the morning to do my triathlon. You know, I think I learned a lot with Hickson. I'm a guy I, I learned watching. Okay, or well, listening. If you tell me one of your mistakes in life... I promise to myself I'm not going to make that mistake because you already did it and I can learn from that. Sure. You know, and I learned a lot from Hickson, watching Hickson and be training with Hickson in his camps as a blue belt. Uh, back in the time in 96 <clears throat> when he was going to fight, um, you know, I was probably a year and a half there. And Hickson is a super quiet guy. Back then, he was very, very serious. Not friendly at all. You know what I mean? And I'm just a 16 years old, super scary. And But I was super good in biking. And then Franginha. You guys know Franginha, right? From Paragon, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Bill Cooper and, and Jeff Glover's Franginha. coach. Uh, just such an amazing guy. Such an amazing jiu-jitsu coach. I love that guy. Just a very very nice guy so we we're training and everybody talks about me how good i was on a bike you know and this and is this is in california this is in california pico right. boulevard hicks and gracie okay right. the old school and then everybody's like oh hicks is gonna start his camp you know tiago you know he do like literally a big part of his camp was cardio okay and we used to have this mountain in Malibu and it was like probably like two hours and 45 minutes and yeah it was two hours and 45 minutes going up and <clears throat> friend just says hey 
do you think you can beat Hickson in that biking hill? I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm pretty good in bike. I, I can bike forever. I may be. And, and then he's like, okay, so he finishes that thing in like 2.45, something like that. So I went there one of those days and I did it way less than that. And he said, dude, I can beat him. He's like, oh, I'm gonna tell him, I'm gonna bring you to the, the camp. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell him. And then he told Hickson, hey, Luis's brother is really good in bike. He, I think he can push you. And uh, he's a blue belt, but he's a very competitive guy. Hickson knows me. He's like, I compete hard. I put my heart. He's like, okay, bring him. So I leave in, uh, we used to live in Redondo Beach, <clears throat> me and Luis. And uh, I just go to school, you know. I got to do my senior year in the high school over there. And um, Luis used to work offshore. And then Luis is like, dude, you're gonna be there at Austin. You know, do your best. Because Luis used to work like super early to like 3 p.m. Like from like four in the morning to like 3 p.m. It was crazy. Kid used to work like his ass there and still go to the gym and like crazy. Go home, calls me, and is like, dude, I'm, I'm on my way. I got all the type wear, food, everything ready, the boards to surf. <laughs> he gets there, everything ready. We jump in the water, we surf for like 40 minutes, we jump out and go to the gym. So he has so much energy, Luis back then, like super proud of this guy, like worked so hard, sleep like very little, yeah. leave the gym like 10, 11 p.m. and go home and, you know, next day like three something in the morning to do his wake. And um, so Hickson's like, okay, so the train starts at eight in the morning and I'm like, oh crap, Luis, it's at work. I don't have how I'm gonna get there. I'm like, shit. A taxi back then is like a fortune, you know right, what I mean? Right, like right. From Redondo to Malibu. It's gonna be like insane money. I'm like, oh shit, get up at six. I'm like, I'm biking there. Oh, shit. Got my backpack and because you can go on a bike path from over there, from I don't know, um, Palos Verdes to all the way to Malibu, you know. So it was like something, an hour and something, okay? So it, now it's something, I'm biking, still dark and <laughs> going there, gets there, get there early, like eight or something, like seven something, <clears throat> nobody there. And then he used to live in the mountains in Malibu, then went up there and then his driveway used to be like big, nice driveway and the house in the back. Yeah. So get there in the garage where, you know, it's the old school mats. So garage is a door down and I'm like, crap, I'm the only one here. First day, right. you know, I'm like, shit, I think I got too early. And then and you're 16 too, so <laughs> yeah. And it was summer, you know. I was out right. of school, and uh, you know, yeah, I got to be three months training on that with Hicks, and it was like something I learned so much, you know. And then I look at it, I'm like, shit, okay, better early than late, right? right. <clears throat> so I'm sitting there by myself, nobody there, and then Hicks and opens the door. Like, I still remember, like, you know, pants, no T-shirt, hair all goofy. <laughs> and he's, like, looking to watch and, like, what are you doing here so early? I'm, like, uh, I'm already shitting in my pants, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, because Hickson used to be really private, you know, and not talk much, not friendly, did right. he speak English? He only spoke Portuguese, right? He used to speak English. He did? He okay. speak English pretty good. Yeah. And, but he speaks Portuguese to me because he knew I was Brazilian, right, Luis's right. brother. And right. So he's like, did you have breakfast? I'm like, um, six in the morning. He's like, come in. And then I'm like, oh, shit. So went inside of his house. And I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> and then... 
sit down in the kitchen with him and he start doing blending and lots of stuff like all kind of green shit <laughs> And for me, juices was just orange juice. You right. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what? He's throwing broccoli. I'm like, God damn broccoli. We eat broccoli. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, shit. So. And this is the mid-90s he's doing this, right? He, he's juicing back This then. is 96. 96, yeah. Okay. And he's juicing. And then. So he gave me like a. Dude, it's like, I don't know, it was a half a gallon. <laughs> it was huge. And then I'm like, he's like, drink it, everything. I'm like, yes, sir. So I start drinking, you know, head down, what I'm going to say. You right, know what I mean? Right, and, right. and he's quiet, doesn't say anything, doesn't ask me anything. I'm like, oh, shit. And so he's like, let's go to the living room. You know, we're in the living room, and he turns the TV on, and we start talking a little bit. And an hour goes by, and he told everybody to be there at 8. So it's 9 a.m., so an hour and something went by, so I'm inside the house. He's like, okay, so do me a favor. Go tell the guys I'm going to be ready in five minutes. And they're already outside for an hour. They've been waiting out there? Yes. And you're inside the house? Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> because he some tells them to get early, yeah. you know, to nobody miss time. Right. But, but it was cold, you know what I mean? And Hickson doesn't like the cold. So he needs the sun to come out good. And yeah. So I opened the door, everybody this, all brown and black belts. <laughs> I opened the door and everybody's like, what the fuck are you doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, everybody was like, what the fuck happens? I'm like, oh, shit. Frangia's like, what are you doing inside of Hickson's house? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I got here so early, and he asked me if I have breakfast. I say no, and he called me in, and we were sitting on the sofa for an hour right now talking. He's like, everybody's like, what did you guys talk about? It? Right. And I'm like, dude, I don't know. I was so nervous. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we get to, and then he says, oh, five minutes, he's going to be ready. And Frangia's like, how do you get here? I'm like, I bike. And she's like, fuck, dude, you're crazy. You're supposed to tell me. I'll, I was, I'll, I can pick you up. I'm like, too late. <laughs> so he's like, you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fresh. 16. Yeah. A machine. <laughs> right. You know, a brand new V8 <laughs> 2019. <laughs> Crap. So he's like, okay. So he's, he, I remember he mentally prepared me. Like, dude, if you have a chance, you pass him. You pass him. I'm like, man, I'm not going to do it. He's like, fuck, dude, you're going to do it. I'm like, oh, like, What do you mean, like when you're rolling? No, 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 no. On the, no, on no, the biking. On the, bike. on the biking oh, mount. Oh, on the biking. Oh, okay. I'm like, what are you talking, pass his guard? You... No, because early in the morning, we yeah. went bike for this mount, two right, hours right, and right. 45 minutes. We yeah. come down, and then he do some uh, cable workout, uh -huh. okay? And then after that, everybody, we roll with him in his garage. Uh -huh. So... And then I says, okay, so a lot of guys there, all the higher belts at the gym is there. Mauricio, Limon, everybody, um, Fernando, who else? Um, so many guys, everybody was there. So, and then I says, okay, so if I, if I got a chance, I'll pass him. So, you know, I'm a blue belt, the only one in the group. And uh, Hawkson too, Hawkson was there. I was 16, probably Hoxon was 14. Right. So, and then, so we went, everybody on the bike, we went down on the mount, you know, and so we hit the spot we are going to supposed to start, everybody stop, and he's like, okay, so, you know, let's try to everybody, you know, stay together and no fucking around. Let's get this thing done hard. And then I'm like, okay, so... We start. I was the last one. Hickson and everybody in line. Yeah. So I'm the last one. Me and Hoxson. So we were laughing and like, and then that shit starts. Five, ten, everybody together. Fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes. You know, everybody starts spraying a little bit, and right. Hickson start getting far. You know, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna start passing those higher belts. And I'm like, let's go, let's go, Hoxson. He's like, dude, I'm, I'm exhausted. Hoxson used to not bike at all. 
And I says, come on, dude, let's go with me. I'm not going alone. He's like, no, 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 you go. <laughs> so and then I start passing everybody. She's like, let's go. And Frangia's like, dude, go, 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 go. Frangia was awesome. I love this guy. So I end up getting tired and tired with Hickson, okay? Like, tight. And then we're going 45, 50 minutes, an hour. And then I look it back, just me and him. Okay, already one hour going up. And I look it back, just me and him. And I says, okay, keep going, keep going. And I'm completely fresh. Right. <laughs> and he has a bandana, uh -huh. you know, in the head, no t shirt, and just like, the dude sweats a lot. I remember I see like the, the sweat dripping from his body to the frame. <laughs> and literally, I was like, really? there. he sweats a lot. Okay. And I'm like, shit, man, I'm brand new. So Hicks and he's like, wow, wow, going up, going up an hour, an hour and 10, an hour and 15, an hour and a half. He looks it back. He looks it back and he sees me. Bang. I was like, oh my God, should I stop? <laughs> you know, I make a fuck it. Keep going, motherfucker. I'm like, I'm 16, you know what right. I mean? Like, so disrespectful, you know what I mean? Like, because Hicks is very competitor. Competitor. Yeah, right. Anything. Ping pong. Doesn't matter. Dude, Doesn't he, matter, he right? will beat you up. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't let him win, oh, what do we, he's like, it's bad. Anything, it's about competition. Yeah. You know, like, he, it, it's incredible how, he, how his head is set for win, right. win, 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 no matter what it is. You know, even if he's really bad at it, he right. will throw himself at it. Wow. It's, it's weird. And he will do it really good. It's kind of like he adapted like crazy. So we going up and he looks it back and I'm like, oh shit, okay. So I'm still alive, right? Like he did not kill me, keep going. So five minutes later, he looks it back again. And then it's around like, I don't know, two hours already. And then I'm like, shit, okay, keep going. I'm looking at the time. I'm like, yes, probably 45 minutes more. And then I says, I'm gonna go a little bit to the right on his bike. When he looks it back on the left, he's not gonna see me. <laughs> and that's what he did because he used to just like- Oh, look left. Look left, like yeah. just like a nice and easy look yeah. and see if I'm still there. And he looks it left and I was not there. And he relaxed a little bit. And then I can see he's slowing down a little yeah. bit. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and then automatic, I start passing him to the right, and I'm like, oh no. I swear to God, I thought he was just gonna like jump out of the bike and choke me there. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh shit, now you can't break it. Keep going. And then I pass him and I say, okay, so I'm gonna set up a 10 minutes crazy pace right now. And I look my my watch and I'm like, 10 minutes, dude, it's do or die, sprint, hard as you can, going up. And I'm like, okay, 10 minutes, go. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Start Shh, really hard. You know, the mountain was a lot of turns and going up, going up, going up 10 minutes, like five, six, seven, eight, 10 minutes. And I keep going hard as I can. And I'm like, okay, shit, should I look it back? Should I look it back? Like freaking out, you right, know what right. I mean? Like I look it back and I saw Hickson way down there. And I'm like, oh crap. And then I'm like, oh shit, oh no way. So, and then I start getting really nervous, you know what okay. I mean? Like, he's gonna kick me out of the gym, you know. 16 years old, you have shit on the brain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so went up and finished the thing, and it's a, like a nice view, beautiful view from whole Malibu Beach, you know, it's like insane. So I get there, like 20 minutes, 25 minutes in front of him. So when he gets there, I was like, it's brand new, okay? <laughs> but sitting, like, crossing my legs, and I put my head down, and I saw him coming. I'm like, okay, so he's coming. Okay, oh, crap, you know, shit. So he passes, he drops the bike, and start doing his breathing, okay? And start taking his heart beep when uh -huh. he puts the hands on the neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just, like, head down, looking with my eye open, like, in the corner. And then he start doing his breathing and then sits down and quiet, did not even say anything. And I'm like, fuck, I fuck it up. You know what I mean? And it was the first day. Right. 
And I'm like, I fuck it up bad. But now I can't change this shit. <laughs> so he's doing his breathing for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Nobody's still coming. Nobody's right. there. So and he did his stretch, his breathing. And I remember he looks at me. He's like, hey, I was looking down. And then I look at him and he's like, what the fuck you have on your legs? <laughs> and then I just broke a smile. I says, I bike a lot. <laughs> he's like, he don't say good job. No. No. And he just. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> he just turns around and walks away. <laughs> this thing, it doesn't exist on his. Really? Dictionary, whatever it is. Like, good job. <laughs> no. Huh? No, he just. Look at me and say, what the fuck you have on your legs? In Portuguese. Yeah. And then I says, oh, I just bike a lot. And he just turned around and... And then he told Franjinha, like, he's like, hey, Franjinha, bring him tomorrow. Nice. Because Franjinha, after the train, he... And then everybody says, okay, bye, guys. You know, everybody start after we train. Um, He's... You know, everybody's saying bye, whatever. And Franjean's like, how are you going to go home? I'm like, biking. And then Hicks is like, you're going biking home? Where do you live? I'm like, oh, I live in Redondo with Louise. He's like, oh, shit. And then how did you get here? And then I see, the Franjean is like, he biked here, Hicks. And he left his house six in the morning. And then he's like, okay, so tomorrow, 8 a.m. here again. I'm like, yes, sir. Wow. And that's how I see Hickson training for his camp. You know, it was like something like I still have in my memory, you know, see every day. Like he do that. He stretches a lot, do a lot of cable, a lot of stuff, a lot of exercise and spar with each one for so many minutes and beat everybody up. Every single one, one by one. Now, what about like technique? What oh. did he What did he go over like back then? Like, you know, that's the that's that that's something I'm trying to learn right now. Okay, I'm a 16 years black belt, right? So, that's what I'm 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 understanding now a little bit. Back then, I used to think like I need good partners, you know, world champions to train to to drill, you know what I mean, for the right. next worlds. That was my mentality. Yeah. That's why when he closes the gym, we, we went back to Brazil and we we opened LCCT, me and Luis, and we he says like, okay, so you guys go there, open your, your, your brand, but don't leave me. And I says, can we go train at Baja Gracie? <laughs> because Baja Gracie was really close to my house and all my friends used to train there. He's like good, really good friend with Hoyler. Okay, even brother, of course, right. but they're very close. You know, and then he says, No, I prefer you go train with Hoyler. And then Hoyler was like two hours from my house in a bus. Who was in charge of the other one? When he closes that gym, right. okay, Pico, he was not teaching anymore. Okay. And then after that, they put that thing in the magazine. Oh, we need a black belt to the new gym, blah, blah, blah. And the guy was teaching, was actually the guy he hired to teach at the gym, I think was in uh, Pacific Palisades for a couple of years yeah. before Kron took over. Okay. It was more, um, uh, Mario, I Mario Aiello. Okay. That's a good friend of mine, my super cool guy. I used to go to his gym a lot in Bon Successo, super nice instructor, and um, still my good friend today. And um, But when he closed that, we went back to Brazil. It was kind of like everybody kind of like, Hickson's not teaching anymore, you know. Everybody started going back home, right. you know. What was his reasoning for closing? I don't know. I think he was um, divorcing. Okay. And after a couple of years, it happens, whatever, whatever happens to Crow, to uh, Hoxson. Yeah. And um, 
that was, you know, I think he went to dark places, right. you know what I mean? Like, he has to deal with that. And Hickson is a very unique guy. He's a, a guy like you can't read. You can't tell when he's happy and you can't tell when he's... Yeah, you can see when he's pissed for sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that a lot of experience comes with that out, one. <laughs> yes, and um, like he's he's a unique guy. He's a samurai. We don't. We're not gonna have another one. We're not gonna have another Michael Jordan. We're not gonna have another Hicks and Gracie. You know, I'm glad he's doing those videos. Those, you know stuff he's doing now and right. his uh, association right. the um, I forgot the name of the confederation the Jiu Jitsu Global Federation Global Federations yeah uh, I'm glad he's doing that because the other day like a couple years ago I, I was talking to my brother I'm like fuck man you know one day Hickson's gonna die and nobody's gonna see 1% Right. what he has you know what I mean like a technique showing by him you know I'm like that's gonna be so bad for jiu right the guy has so much I go there man I feel like I'm a white belt I go there I feel shit I went on his house a couple months ago it's a it's a blessing thing okay to go to Hickson's house and you know I, me and Louise were there for like three hours and a half and it's a blessing thing, but I live there like fucked up. Like, fuck, I don't know anything. That's so crazy. I, I, and I know a little bit. Right, right. Right, Javi? <laughs> yeah, you, you, uh, he, I mean, he makes me feel like I don't know anything. So I, this I know just a little trickles bit. down. A little I, know, bit. <laughs> I know a little bit. Okay. I don't know a lot, but I, mean, I know. Luis, Luis, when he was on the podcast, he would tell us that uh, Hickson would just say, I'm going to armbar you. Like, yeah. I'm going to armbar you, and there's nothing you can do yeah. to stop it. It's insane. He mountains you and you can't escape. And I escape from everybody's mount. And you can't do shit about it. It's, it's, it's nobody. People talk shit about Hicks and it's because they never have experience with Wait, Hickson. who talks shit about Hicks? Uh, do people really talk shit about Hicks? I know the old, the new people now. Yeah, the, the, the younger you generation. Know, the younger really? generation don't have a clue. I see Hicks tapping so many black belts in one day, one by one. And taking names like Saulo Ribeiro was the current name on world champion, IBJJF, weight and absolute, and 20 more, like nothing. It's five minutes or th three finishes, okay? Okay. And the, he, At his house? Yeah. That's what he no, does? at the gym. At the gym. Yeah. Okay. Because what happened is in 95, you know... It was super cool. When I moved there in 95, it was super cool because I got to see the... I went to the Pan Ams. My brother was a purple belt. And Luis took, I think, second in the purple belt. And uh, I lost it. I was a uh, young blue belt. I lost it. Luis took second. But I got to see a lot of people coming to Hickson's gym. You know, like so many, like... Everybody, even if they're not Hickson, but they everybody calls California. Like, I'm gonna go to Hickson's gym to right. visit, you know what I mean? And one of those, and I think it was 95, I see Hickson finish like so many black belts, three taps or five minutes, okay? And he he start with the light black belts, and he end up with like Saulo, with uh, Fabio Gurgel. All those guys, and the end after yeah. roll with like twenty dudes, already black belts, right. and every, each one dude he taps three times before five minutes. That day I fall in love with Hickson. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I love this guy. Right. You know, I'm glad I'm not a woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna fight for that dude. <laughs> I know he's married, but fuck it. <laughs> But <laughs> it was like, I was like, oh my God, Saulo is a monster. You know, Fabio yeah, Gugiao right. was a monster. Right. And he just finished those two three times less than five minutes. Everybody, three taps before five minutes. I'm like, oh my goodness. You okay. know, and today they don't, this jujitsu today, 
I'm not gonna say I don't like it, okay? Because I think everything involved in life, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I don't like 50-50, okay? It's just like so ugly. I, I, I'm, I don't love beating Bolo, but it's a fun game. Yeah. It's fun. You don't hurt yourself. Right. You don't get too tired, you know right. what I mean? Right, 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 yeah. It's very technical. Yes. Okay, and I love when they pull to do beating bolo because I love to pass. So for me, it brings a challenge. Okay, you bring in your best, I'm bringing my best. Let's see who is the best, you know. But the younger generation don't, don't, don't have clue, you know. Look at Kron, you know. One of the, the nicest fight in the gi, I saw Kron. Um, I, I love to watch this too today. I always watch, okay. I'm biking, okay. I have a nice triathlon bike. I just did Ironman uh, a couple months ago, two months ago, mm -hmm. June. I did Ironman in Madison, Wisconsin. So I'm a big fan of Ironman and triathlon because it just got my jiu-jitsu better every day, okay? So I am doing triathlon for, I don't know, maybe 20 years right now. But never competing and to right, win, right. just to free my mind, you know, mm -hmm. to be on the bike for two, three hours. You gotta have focus in something. And I'm, I don't bike. I always tell my students, you guys gotta you know, go bike with me, you know, you, if your leg gets tired in jiu-jitsu, you're done. What are you going to do? Right. You know, so go run, go bike, go swim. The swimming helps your breathing. You know, the run, you know, it beats you up. It's not very fun. Mm -hmm. And you got to keep focused. And I, don't, I always tell my students, like, what do you think when you bike for three hours? I'm like, dude, I don't bike. I do jiu-jitsu for three hours on a bike. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly thinking jiu-jitsu, constantly thinking, because yeah, it's a mental break. Right. Iron Man is a mental break. It's mentally try to break you every, after three hours, it's just, oh, you know, please, what I'm doing here, stop, stop, stop. No, right. fuck that, I'm not gonna quit, I'm gonna die. I'm a fighter, right. you know, I'm, I'm a, dude, I can't do this. I'm gonna kill myself. You know, I'm a very competitor guy. Like, I'll finish that thing crawling, but I don't stop, right. you know. And, you know, see Hickson, like, doing all those training, the biking, next day swimming, next day running. It was, like, pretty cool. And this young jiu-jitsu right now, it's all about points, advantage, you know. And I was saying in 2005 about this, so... You know, 2004, 2001, 2002, I conquered the world, you know, things was doing really well, and I say, so in 2005, I'm like, I have six matches. I'm gonna finish each one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work to finish this. Okay, I'm gonna, because I won the world, and then I got third after that, and then I got third again, and Hickson was telling me, like, you gotta go for a finish. Okay, and then in 2005, I have two golds and two browns and the world's adult. And then I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm gonna finish everybody in this year. And then I trained six months for that. I was already training. Right. You know, I trained 12 months, 365 days a year. So I was like, I'm gonna finish each one. I'm just gonna try to make Hickson proud. Mm -hmm. Because win the worlds for Hickson, if you don't have all finishes, it doesn't matter. Really? Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. So, and then I says, I'm going to finish everybody. Then got my first fight, finished the dude. Got my second fight, finished the dude. And I'm like, fuck, now it's going. You know, have so much energy and going to the semi quarterfinal, everybody start getting a little sloppy, you know what I mean? And they just... Right. I'm building up, you know, triathlon is just keeping me there, you know, and third fight, finish the dude, fourth fight, finish the dude, semi, I got this kid, I just could not finish this dude, he was a rubber man, Oh really? you know what I mean, I attack his arm for 10 minutes, I pop his arm left and right, and he just did not tap, and I ended like... I'm in a, I'm 
I jumped from half, from passing to his arm in the last minute again. And I just straight his arm back, back on the floor. He's like flat on the floor. And I'm like pulling the arm across the hip here. Wow. And it just pops so many times. And it's like five, ten seconds to go. Luis is like, go to the mount, go to the mount. It's just, he was exhausted because I attacked that kid for like, 10 minutes and he just got a takedown on me okay on the beginning of the fight because i went to pool and he grabbed my pants uh, yeah. and then that's how the match starts mm -hmm. i end up losing two points because i did not see him grabbing my pants so but i have like i don't know 20 advantages you know what i mean from arm bars all over and then I, Luis, i go to the mound go to the mound he was exhausted just a dead meat on the floor yeah and then I just could not go to the mount because I have a mission. And then time is out. I lost by two. You know, that thing was the worst day of my life still today. What? Yeah. Damn. I was going to be able to fight Bibiano Fernandez on the final. You know, that was my dream. Do you guys know Bibiano Fernandez? No. Okay. So I you, do because you've talked about it before. You Google him. He <laughs> okay. fights in Japan now. <laughs> He still fights this day? He still fights in yep. this day. Put it, go YouTube Bibiano Fernandez. This kid is to be a monster. He's your age. Yes. He's he's probably like a year younger than me. Okay. And, um, but 15 years ago, he probably, yeah, that's 15 years ago, he transferred from the gi to the MMA. Oh. He doesn't compete in the gi anymore. No okay. gi, whatever. He just fight MMA. But, and the light feather black belt, he used to be in the name back then. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I lost that thing. I end up getting third. I still have that medal, and it's the one I really hated. <laughs> <laughs> because in that day, you know what I learned in that day? What's that? I'm not Hickson. <laughs> Just that day you learned that? Yeah. No. I'm not Hickson. And... Um, it was very frustrated, you know. When me and Hick, Luis, we got together with Hicks, and I'm stupid. I always say something. Luis is always the quiet one. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luis, yeah. I find that so hard to believe. No, I always come with something stupid. <laughs> you know, Hicks say something, and I just can't hold myself. And, you know, uh, like... When, I, example, I went to one of my MMA fights, I went to see Hickson and his house and me, Luis, and one of my black belts. And then, you know, I knock at the door, he's opening the door, he asked me, like, what is your game plan for the fight? Did not even let me get it in. I'm like, uh, my game plan, hi, you know, <laughs> normally we say hi, you know, first. He's <laughs> like, what is your game plan? I'm like, again, plan for the fight? He's like, yeah. I'm like, um, I'm gonna get close to him. I'm gonna grab him and I'm gonna take him down and I'm gonna finish him. He's like, okay, get in. And then I'm like, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so we went there, living room, mats, TV happening, MMA, whatever. And then, so, we start going standing up. He's like, wrong, wrong. He just say that, wrong. And bah, wrong, bah. Just cracks you? Oh, shit. <laughs> I got beat up so bad in three hours and a half in that day. <laughs> and and uh, uh, compared to my the fight, I, I did not get hit at all in the fight. And at his house, he beat me up. <laughs> it gets in one point so bad because I'm... I don't know, I get frustrated because I, I want to tell him like, dude, that doesn't work for me. I told him, Hickson, I'm not you. Right. This is not working for me. Oh my God, he got so mad. Really? He beat me up so bad. And Luis is just like covering his eyes like, fuck, Luciago is so stupid. Why he say that? Uh. <laughs> you know, and he's beating me up so bad and I'm confronting him with like, I can't, you know what I mean? Like right. shit like that because I'm so frustrated. And... He goes upstairs, okay, to get it, like, gloves, because he's, like, punching me. And then I'm like, Luis looks at me, he's like, hey, stop it. He's going to hurt you serious. 
And then I'm like, what I'm doing? I'm just telling him, like, this is hard for me to do. It's, he's the dude, you know right, what I mean? Right, and right. He's like, don't fucking say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Get beat up quiet. It's going to be nicer, n- easier. Right, right. And then, oh, my God, it's always like that. I always, like, confront him, like, yeah, you know what I mean, with something. He got mad. Yeah. And he goes and beat me up. <laughs> I love him. He's just like, it's, I have a lot of experience with Hoyler too. Amazing yeah. jiu-jitsu. Oh my God. Like when I was training there, when. So this is, this is at Muay Thai back in Rio? Muay Thai back in Rio when we Muay back, when we went back from uh, California. What year was that? 2000. Wow. Yeah, 2000. I was a purple belt. Luis was a brown belt. So and Hickson gave you your purple? Yes. Nice. So, and then brown and black. Oh, yeah, of course. And so we're, when I was going there to train, you know, two hours in the bus, the train was from noon to two. Did you, sorry, did you, did Hickson introduce you to Hoyler? Did you know Hoyler Yeah, I, I used to know Hoyler because Hoyler used to come to California okay. every year for the Pan Ams. I see. And so you guys were already familiar. Yes, Cristiano like, Fernand, uh, Cristiano Marcelo. Because um, back then, I can imagine people, because it, there was no internet. No. So people might have gone to gyms at that point and said, oh, yeah, I train with Hicks. And, yes. Oh, I'm, I train under this guy. And right. you can't right. prove Yes, it. that's now you I know. know Fabio Guzzo, you know, because Fabio used to go there to train with um with Hickson. Right, right. Okay, and what for when Mar- uh, Fabio fought Mark Kerr, Remember that fight? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it was in UFC five. I don't know six? which one it was. It was something like that. When uh, Fabio Gugel took that fight against Mark Hunt, Mark Kerr, mm-hmm. that just enormous dude. Yeah. And I get to see Hicks and training with Fabio for thirty days. Wow. Every day in class. Wow. Every day. You know. And it was amazing. It was like crap. Class is going on here, and he's training with Fabio in the end of the match. And it was awesome. And then Fabio is just an amazing person. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, it's been a while I don't see Fabio, but... He comes to Chicago. Yeah, I want to... I, yeah, I, you know, he's the general, yeah. right? Like, you know, I'm a instructor today. I try to build fighters and, you know competitor guys and it's hard it's hard people it's lazy people don't follow orders that's one thing freaks me out you know what i mean like you, you gotta do this and this this, this. why oh shit i just want to go home right now go go fuck yourself dude <laughs> you know i just can't do this shit i don't have patience. Hickson, Hickson was like that no one questioned Hickson when no he, class, he right? has he tells you what to do and you do just it do quiet it. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's how I learn, and that's how I think it should be. Right. You know, when Hick, if Hickson turns to me and says, uh, jump a thousand times, I'm going to say, yes, sir. How high mm-hmm. you want it. You know what I mean? Right. Like uh, The fighters or the, the whatever competitor guys you train, you say, jump ten times. He's going to say, why? <laughs> Go home, dude. Right. You know what I mean? Like... I don't know. Whatever Hickson says, you just do it. He knows what he's doing. You know, it works for him. Right. You know, it's hard, but, but, you know, look at, you know, Kron. One of the best fights for me is watch Kron fighting uh, uh, Leandro Lo when he was losing by uh, 6-0. And Kron is just so calm and like any other Gracie is, you know what I mean? They have this thing, this patient, this calm, this cold blood we call, you know what I mean? Like, look at Roger Gracie, how this guy is a, is a, is a piece of ice. You don't see motion on him winning or losing, you know what I mean? Look at those guys when they fight their faces. It doesn't change. It's something like it goes beyond we know, you know? And... Um, I see those fight. That fight, I was at the Worlds watching Kron, and he was losing by 6-0 from Leandro Lo. 
you know, and I was like, holy crap, six zero is going to be a challenge right now. Chrome work it on, you know, sweep him, got his back and choke him out. I'm like, shit, that's Hickson right there. <laughs> <laughs> Did Crone train with Hickson a lot? Uh, you know, like I saw an interview Crone saying um, he learns more from his dad on the dinner table than in the mat. Yeah. Wow. And that's how good he got. You know <laughs> what I mean? Imagine if he right. he has... Only Kron can say that. Right. When 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 Hickson closes the gym, Kron was just like a little teenager. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he was all in the skateboard. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I used to go to Hickson house, I end up driving for them for a while and pick them up in the school, you know, Kawan, Kowling, you know. And uh Kron was just like all about skateboard. And uh, he used to put the gear on, you know, but he was just having fun, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, this interview I saw a couple of days ago, he said that so I learned more from my dad on the dinner table than really on the mat. Imagine if he spent a lot of time with Hickson on the mat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, who did he train with then? Who did Crone? That's, that's something you can't understand about Hickson or Crone or Hodger. Okay, um, you know, it's something I'm trying to figure it out. Like, and I'm, I told this to you guys in my class one of those days, you know, you don't need world champions partners and stuff like that. You can do your quality training. Who Hicks and train with to get that good? Tell me. You know, I see every day, every year in the Pan Ams, all those fighters get there, Hoyler, Saulo, Shanji, Margarita, um, I saw Gabriel Napon, Fabio Santos, a lot of guys from Fabio, and get then just <laughs> get beat up bad. How Hickson know all those stuff? It's happening. You know what I mean? It's I don't know. It's something like you can't understand, and we're not gonna do. <laughs> we're not gonna understand. We're not gonna figure it out. Mm. It's the dude is born for that. Because his game is a lot like Hickson's. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Crown it's just like you know, a mini copy of Hickson. Yeah. You know, it's he's he's a mini copy of Hickson, you know. But I don't know, man. Those it's 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 I don't know. It's like Michael Jordan, you know. We're not gonna have another one. We're gonna have guys good at it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Kobe Bryant, whatever, LeBron. Right. Right. It hurts my feeling when people compare LeBron to Michael Jordan. You know, like, he's good, but he's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you can't compare anybody to Hickson right now. Hickson, I always say Hickson is 100 years old, 100 years above of us. Mm -hmm. He's 100 years in front of everybody. Right. You know, I go see him, and it was funny. When I won the woods in the brown belt, okay, and um, he's like, okay, so, you know, 30 days, go to my house. He was in California. I was in Brazil. He's like, go to my house, and we're going to work it on the test, whatever. I'm like, cool, awesome. Can I go there in 30 days? I got some stuff to do. He's like, yeah, no problem. And I have some positions, like, really good, you know, like, really, really good. And then I get down his house, and I get there. He was training with Crown, okay? And then he's like, put your gear on. And then I put my gear on. We work it on some stuff. And he put me to train with Crown. I have, Crown was a little kid. And we have fun. And he's like, okay, so let's roll. You know, show me what you got. And, you know, I was young, hungry, and just a world champion and I say like, today is my day <laughs> <laughs> oh man what a stupid dude <laughs> you know what a stupid thing you know I you know some stuff happens in life like I still try to figure it out okay yeah. and then that day he was in front of me okay so and he was warming up and I was trying my my best to like <laughs> And that day, I, I thought I was going to get something. That's how stupid I was. 
<laughs> like you're that confident. You're stupid. Like, that's not confidence. <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> confidence, it, it, you know, it's different than being stupid. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, it's more stupid. I do. I am confident, but I am very stupid too. <laughs> so and then so. I'm, we're rolling and figuring it out things and I'm trying this and trying that. And it, it happens to me once in life. It never happens still anymore, but it happens that day. So it feels like this. He threw the smoke, uh, the smoke, uh, what do you call that? Like a smoke Ninja bomb. thing. Yeah, yes. yeah, a smoke, a smoke bomb. bomb right. Like, poof, disappears and appears in my back <laughs> <laughs> and he's a big dude yeah you know 185 pounds and he's had his this big you can't miss that <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> and i'm like holy shit where is him <laughs> in my back i swear to god that was the weird feeling ever in my life still to today right like if you ask me what is the worst like the weird thing ever happens to you training that was that thing. That was it. Like a big dude disappear, and 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 when I figured it out, he was in my back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I blinked my eye. Probably I blinked like yeah. little, little. I don't know. It was like poof, <laughs> and I freak out so bad I could not roll really good anymore. I could not like I'm like trying to figure it out what right. happened. I'm like fuck. This dude has power. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm like 21, 22. I'm like, this dude has power. Right. He has fucking magic power. You know, he just, what do you call like tele, tele, <laughs> teleport? Teleport. Teleported. He's, dude, he, this motherfucker can like poof, disappear. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, shit, that thing was crazy. So you're saying your uh, your best positions that you've been working on so hard and that have gotten you through worlds oh, didn't really matter, did they? No. <laughs> it's funny. I try, I try to sweep him. I try. I don't know. The dude is like a spider. He has eight arms. You know what I mean? Like, he has a 360-degree base. Yeah. You know, he did something, man. Like, in his house, like, I... This I, is on the last I, trip? Yeah, on the last trip. I, I, I just can't. This is on that day, I I told Luisa he's an alien. <laughs> like he's an he's a, he's an alien. He did something with his feet and staying in base. Yeah, like with his feet together, and I could not move the dude. Incredible! It's it's insane. Like that, like that's something. I don't know. Like, I mean, do you ever see that show where they were like testing martial artists with different levels of like? Um, like they were hooked up fight to a machine. science or yeah, whatever it's called. Science. Yeah, I would be so fascinated to see a fight science done with Hickson at his age now, even more. No, you know? I don't think it's going to be interesting. I know he wouldn't do it for sure, but you know, I would be. I'll tell you super why. Interested in seeing because you his can't core see. Strength. I know, but just knowing is like how he can apply his core strength, how he can apply it downward. Look, you know I, mean? I can apply pressure. a little bit of pressure, okay? Right, right. So ask this guy, right? It, what do you feel? Like it feels like you're crushing my, my your experience. Spleen Tell your experience my... about my pressure when yeah. I train with you. Yeah, no. Um, so when he's taking it easy on me, uh, it merely feels like I've got a car parked on my chest uh -huh. or stomach. Well, how big is that car? Uh, like like a Buick. A Buick, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll make sure what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, not, not like a golf cart car. No, no, not like, like, no, not not like a Fiesta or like, like, like a smart car. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's usually when he's like just being normal yes. heavy. I'm 150 pounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then when he really puts it on me, it's like he's trying to smash my organs through my spine. Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, I'm doing my best to try and learn that and right. emulate that. And uh, I'm a long way off. But uh, took me a lot of years. And that is nothing compared to Hickson. It's, it's, you can't, like this thing on, you say you want to see him do it. I don't think it's going to be fun to see it because you can't see it. And if you see it, you're not going to understand and you're not going to believe. But it's like okay. those numbers. It's like, it's like, it's like when someone throws a punch, like just, just in there, if they're shadow boxing, mm -hmm. then they hit that pad and that pad reads a number and that numbers X, whatever the number is. Mm -hmm. You're like, holy shit, that's, that's an incredible punch or a kick or mm -hmm. a bite from a lion as opposed to, you know, uh, alligator or crocodile or something. And you I'm see not, that bite force. 
you know, it's just I'm like not really sure what they would actually be testing there though. Well, like, that, cause he's not, cause like, like the way Hickson stands in base and it's like, you, you can't move him or take him down, right. you know, like, like this is, you know, like in Chinese martial arts and, and whatnot, we talk mm-hmm. about like rooting, you know, and, and, and that's like their way of saying base and <clears throat> he's very, very rooted to the ground. And I don't know, like, I don't know that it's just pressure. It's like, it's like some combination of, of pressure and balance right. and, and, you know, having your center of gravity in the right spot at the mm-hmm. right time and, you know, knowing when to meet force and when to yield to force. Right, right. Um, so yeah, like I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what number you would put behind that. Yeah, I don't know either. In, I'm in just saying like it'd be, that. It'd be, it's hard. It'd be it's, interesting. It's, it's hard to understand. You have yeah. to feel it. Right. Yeah. And you so know. much of it's timing too. Like it's, it's, it's feeling. Yeah. When he talks about like the invisible jujitsu, mm-hmm. okay, when when he told us about that, we in Brazil. This is what when did he bring us uh, up? that was two thousand and eight. Okay. Two thousand and nine, two thousand and eight, I think. We we used to teach in San Corrado, it's like a super rich, you know, uh, area in Rio. And his best friend lives in that building. Um, and uh, we used to teach a lot of rich kids there. This is, no, this was like a, an apartment complex. Yes. Right. Yes. It's like an apartment, like one by floor. Right. You know what I mean? Like huge stuff, like millions of dollars. So, and then they used to have like the, the, the jiu jitsu area. And then that's where, you know, one of my friends, a doctor, introduced us to one of those kids in that building, and then they got like it, and then we start teaching the two kids, and then start going four, six, you know, eight, ten. Now all the kids now want to train with jiu-jitsu with us, but sometimes when we used to get there, Hickson is training, doing a private with his best friend and the guy's kids. Uh, and then, oh, hey, how you doing, master? You know, and we sit down, we talk. He done the private, and he works some stuff with us. And so, and then we are going home after a couple hours, and then, so we are about to get it in the car. And he's talking about the this thing he's working on, and and he says like, I'm working on in this thing right now, and he 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 literally say like that. Me and Louise were like right in our cars and he's like with us and he says like um i am working on this thing right now it's like i feel i don't know jujitsu and this is just bringing me to a next level and then i'm already like uh, i'm looking him and see if he's like drunk or (laughs) or (laughs) i love how that's where tiago's mind goes (laughs) you know i'm like what is going on with hickson you know, I'm trying to look at his eye and see what's going on. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's this, I, I'm calling it invisible jiu-jitsu. And when he say that, it's like invisible jiu-jitsu. He tries to explain, like, you can't see, you got to feel it. But I'm like, oh, crap, Hickson is getting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I did not went through my mind anything, you know, like, and I was like, wow. And then that's when... He start working, and every time we see him, show a little bit of this, I show a little bit of that, and and then I start understand because you see Hickson, he's one hundred and eighty five pound. Mm-hmm. He's an average guy, right? Yeah, right. He's not, not ginormous. He's not, yeah, he's yeah. an average guy. Like every kid today in the high school is one hundred and eighty five pound, <laughs> right? So he's an average guy size. So and you see him training with big dudes, black belts. And you see Hicks and Mount, or you see Hicks and Side Control, and they just can't escape. Mm-hmm. You're like, how did that happen? You know, like you can't throw him away. You can't just move him. He's like, he's 185. That dude is like 300 pounds and super strong and can't even move. I think I can do that too. And then I start working on, you know, it's not as close what he has, but it's helping me a lot. Right, Javi? Mm-hmm. It's helping me a lot. It's, it's I don't know. I, I, I hope Hickson stays here for a while so we can see more and more, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, he he's the man right there. I see him in front of everybody, each one. Still today, bring all the best. 
telling me, where is Hickson right now? A hundred years over everybody else. Yeah, they. So when you went to visit Hickson um, a few months ago, we don't know anything. <laughs> but is he? But is it just a rolling session, or does he actually go over technique? Do you he like, go, No, it's you technique. Roll, yeah, roll it's all technique. He it's talks like to you about what he puts you through that thing. Yeah. Show me how to do it. No wrong. It's like this. Do it. No, come on, and he stiff it up a little bit, and you mm -hmm. can't do it anymore. Yeah. You know, it's fun. He shows you the technique, perfect, and then he says, "Okay, do it." And then you do it, you know, he lets you do it. And then he says, like, come on, let's go. And you can't do it. It's insane. It's Does like, he allow you to, do you, do you, do you ever film it for your own no. personal? No, he doesn't. No, it's all in the brain. That's it, huh? Yeah. That's why I just leave my memory card yeah. for jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> I don't name positions because it's going to take too much space, right? <laughs> <laughs> Javi's like, what do you call this position? I'm like... I'm bar from Mount. <laughs> but that goes the same way. Is that a name? That's super same cool. I never thing. see it. I'm like, dude, I can't keep naming things. Now I have to like save it. Positions and names. Right, no, right. dude, let's. <laughs> Andre, Andre's like, uh, uh, we asked him like, what's that position? Because that's a choke. That's a choke. That's a choke. Mm -hmm. That's a choke. Okay, we got it. Yeah. That's, that's, a that's, that's a choke. Right. That's a choke from guard. That's a choke from mouth. That's a choke. Right. That no, oh, it's that's a choke chokes. from side control. <laughs> exactly. That's, you can't. It's just chokes. What do you call that choke? People name this, name yeah, that, and yeah. you that's know. Funny, yeah. I go to seminars and people are like, hey, can you show that position? And they say they name. I'm like, yeah. What the fuck? I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck position is that? <laughs> but then they show it to you and you and know what it I is. And then I was like this, it's something I don't know, you know right, what I mean? Right. Like it's going to be pretty interesting. Right. Like I search, I study still every sure, day. Yeah. You know, I do my, my search and I'm like, oh shit, I never heard about that shit. And then show me, like, oh fuck, you serious dude? You call that thing like that? Let me show you. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, so take us back to 2000, you go train with Hoyler. I know yeah. we, we, we verged we, off. We, we verged yeah. off that. So many stories, man. We gotta have to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hoyle is a beast, man. It's a mini Hicks, and I, I really like his jujitsu style. Yeah, you know, back then, like Hicks, he was like a killer. You know, so you moved I, back to Brazil. Yes, and then I start going to Hoyler to right. train. Okay. Now, thought, did you, when you came to the United States, you weren't an American citizen, or you? No, were, no, you no. I was just on a student visa. I and, see. Yes. Now I'm. Yes, I, I'm not an American citizen yet, but I do have green card. I see. Like it was something like me and Louis, we work really hard for that. Yeah. And we got it in the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, you have many options to get the green card here. You know, and the easy way people always say is get married, right. right? But I was married already to my wife, and you know, my dad always teach me like, do things in the right way. It's gonna cost you more. It's gonna take longer. It's gonna be a pain in the butt, but in the end, nobody can take it from you. And um, six years ago, when I moved here in 2010, back to stay, we moved here 2010. I applied for a O-1 visa. It's a permanent working visa, okay? I'm not a permanent resident, okay? And it was good for three years plus three years. Three years and then I pay a fee and they extend it for three more years. But after a year, pay my tax, everything was good. I already has history here, pay my tax every year, blah, blah, blah. After I applied for my green card for uh, extraordinary ability, yes, it's a super hard one to get it. You got to prove it, everything and anything you have in that history of jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. so you don't take um, pretty much the immigration wants to. You prove you're the best on that whole area. Nobody is better than you. You're not taking any American job, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you are allowed to serve America and help, you know what I mean? The community, okay. whatever. And it calls extraordinary ability. And that's what I did, me and Louise, and we got it, you know. We pay everything they ask. We went through everything and we got it. Nice. Now we good. You know, people always say, like, oh, when are you gonna do your citizenship? Yeah, I'm already, I can do already. 
you know, do, do you be America? I love America. You know, I'm so grateful for America, you know, due to me, to my wife and my kids. I love, I love this. I love my country, you know. <clears throat> but when we moved here, it was because we worked so hard in Brazil and everything in Brazil works a wrong way. You know, it's just so corrupt, you know, and if you're a serious person, you want to work hard, it doesn't work. It just, I was tired. And I'm like, I'm, I have a door in America. I'm going to move there. That place is serious. You know, you have value there. And that's what I did. And that was the best thing ever. Every day I would get up and I thank, you know, God for let me move to America and live here. Because this place is awesome. I got mad when people talk shit about America. Oh, really? Yeah, that thing is one thing that freaks me out a little bit sometimes. Like, you know, it's like this. Um, I'm not American, okay? But I pay my tax. I think I leave, you know, the best way, you know, uh, for America. I don't do shit I, you know what I mean like yeah. I try to do everything in the right way um, you know everything for me is always in the right way so I think I live my life you know in the right way so I'm a good citizenship you know I'm a good citizen for America you know well, and, a lot of that probably comes from because you came from Brazil yeah I see you the shit appreciate there appreciate yeah. it more I think exactly. the, the people who are like who like the bash you know the America you know all that I think they never really struggled. I, I think it's the younger know, generation that, like who can't appreciate. That's why when we do the Brazilian camp, the jiu-jitsu camp in mm -hmm. Brazil. Mm -hmm. Which you guys just came back from. Yeah, we just came back with like 14 guys. And uh, I like to take them to the richest places, to the poor places. Mm -hmm. So they can see and appreciate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because sometimes I get up, you know, and then you'll go see your Facebook and you see a person born in America, you know, and talk shit about America, mm -hmm. pissed with this, with that. Right. I just want to, it happens to me a couple of times, I go and I, it's in my Facebook, right? So sometimes it's my friend, sometimes it's just a person, I don't know, you know what I mean? Right, Likes right. my jujitsu, whatever. So, and then I go and I see and this guy, I have a contact with this guy and I'm like, oh fuck, I'm going to say something for this dude. Mm -hmm. And then I go and, you know, type it a you huge, engage. yeah i type it a huge <laughs> message and thanks god like you know i i go and i'm like before i send it i'm like shit this guy's gonna turn around he's gonna say what the fuck you talking about you're not even america yeah. you know what i mean and i go and i delete it <laughs> and i don't send it because in the end he's right you know but what it i doesn't mean matter. your opinion is still uh, valid because you live here but that it, thing is gonna hurt my feelings so bad i'm gonna yeah. get my car i'm gonna drive wherever he is right. and i'm gonna beat him up so i gotta stop my actions you know what right, i mean i right. don't send that message right. and i still be safe right <laughs> it's one of but, the rare moments when tiago has a bit of a filter fortunately <laughs> yes exactly no i think that's like a light from another place like don't send it <laughs> <laughs> the clouds part <laughs> yes i think we have everything here the best you know what i mean like i don't know man like everything works you go get your driver license you go open a bank account you you want to cancel your phone you want to fix this everything works right. in brazil it's just like you want to shoot yourself <laughs> for anything you just like crap i just want to kill please kill so kill so my phone I, <laughs> i'm not using it anymore you bet you gotta you know what Can't i mean do it, huh? It, yeah. Nothing gets done. Bureaucracy it, is an issue. I see. No, it's not bureaucracy. It's corruption. Well, okay, yeah. The, <laughs> the, the we have bureaucracy everywhere, but you got to follow, you know what I mean? But anyway, I love Brazil too. It's a it's a beautiful place to go visit. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's magical when you go there. We're there with a the nice house on the lake, riding... The other side is the beach, you know, yeah. we have a boat and a huge house. We're going again in January. Yeah, I'm trying so, to trying to convince this guy to go with. Do you have to? You want me to go? Yeah, remember Look, I, I well, mentioned it on the last podcast. Watch this. If a, a kid in Brazil loves basketball, where he has to go? Or football, American football, where he has to go? 
he is a dreamer. He loves football. Where he has to go here, right? right. So probably he has to go to Green Bay, right? Well, Bears, <laughs> right? I'm sure, so, James is happy you said that. <laughs> yes, you know, like, yeah. And um, so, kid, gotta come here to see. You know, we got football with you know American football in Brazil, but just for fun, we don't have teams you know or teams or like stuff like that. But same thing, your jiu-jitsu, you got to go in Brazil the to Mecca. see where that thing came from. Right. You go to the favela, you know, train in the favela and the gyms there on the ground. You know, we have, we still have people who represent us there. And it's funny, we do have the gyms in Rio, LCCTs, and people represent us. Nice places, you know, Americanized, nice yeah. matches. Everything pretty cool. And then we do have the underground, you know, gyms in the favela. Yeah. You know, but the problem with the favela is we got two type of favelas. One, it's with the drug dealers and one, it's without, okay? The ones with drug dealers, you cannot go there. No. No, okay. you can't. We, pff, done, no, period. You don't want to step in that place. How do you know which one's which? I know. Oh, I'm raised and born know. there. You know where to drive here, right? Uh, you know yes, where I to know go. The driver, yes. You know where to go, right? right you right. know where you can't go. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. Right? Same thing. Doesn't change anything like that. It's all the same. So, and we do have places, you know, the favelas don't have drug dealers and it's just poor people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Try to survive good people, happy people. And then one of those camps... We took those the guys to this gym in the favela, and we took t this the guys in the other gym in a nice condominium houses, mm. beautiful place, awesome, close to the beach. And then next day, on the third day, we first day we took them here, second day we took them here. And the third day, I asked them, where you guys want to go? Oh, we want to go to the favela. Really? Train there. It's awesome, the energy, the kids there. You know, after that, it's like 11 something, midnight. We go eat pizza in the favela, acai. Yes. You know, we can walk around. It's yeah. no danger. It's just a favela with poor people. It's no, right. no drugs related. Where it's no drugs, there's no guns. You know what I mean? I in Brazil, pretty much. If you go to the favela that has no drugs, you don't see guns, you know. If you go to the favelas, it has drug dealers. You see kids carrying like M16, AK47, really? 15, 13, 12 years old kids everywhere. If he doesn't like you, you have a serious problem. If he looks at you because, I don't know, he's super high, he goes against you and is like, you're a cop, you're a cop. Whatever happens, now That's you in deep shit. Really? Yeah. That quick? It's bad. Wow. But, you know, I... We went there. We spent nine or ten days there. You know, nothing bad happens because I know where to go. Right. I'm raised and born there. You know what I mean? It was fun. Everybody loves it. You know, they want to come back in January. We try to always make a new group, you know, because we cannot take like 30 people, you know. But oh, you limit. There's a yeah, limit. Yeah, that is a limit. So end of the January, get ready. <laughs> get your ass in shape. We're going to put you on a speedo on the beach, uh -huh. <laughs> on the sunga. Oh, crap. I always give the gringos a hard time. They're like, I'm not going to use that. <laughs> Everyone wants to wear board shorts, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and everybody, all the, the, the people on the beach is, oh, look at those gringos. Ah, they know right <laughs> away. They know everybody uses those. It's not like a speedo, you know. It's yeah, like yeah. a... Almost like I MMA, Valley, like Valley Tudo Tudo, shorts, yeah, you know, right. like Vandalay used to use back yeah, in the yeah. days. You know, stuff like that. But you got to be confident to use that, too. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> what so else? Come take, on, take bring it on. Take us back to Hoyler. Take us back yeah. to Hoyler. Okay. You want to hear more about that, I huh? do. Okay, so yeah. my, after being there a couple months, and then the Wolves, the training team for the Wolves start. And then, you know, I got to roll with a lot of people, good people, you know. Is Probably. Hoyler your size? No, he. I was rooster. He was feather. Okay. Well, he, he was, was 154 heavier, huh? pounds, oh, wow. and I was 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I used to walk 135 pounds. Yeah. So, um, one day after, after, I don't know, two, three weeks training for the Wolves, like, I don't know, man, uh, like 50 black belts, 60 black belts, 60 brown belts, 30, 40 purple belts. Like, the mats used to be like 
the size of like a basketball field. Wow. Yeah. And it was huge orange, like super nice. And, you know, I look at it. First time I saw like probably 200 people in the room, like 60 black belts. I'm like, oh my God. And then one week goes by, two weeks go by, three weeks, you know, I'm training with everybody. I always try to select black belts. So Holly goes at me, is like, oh, you're doing really good, man. I'm proud of you. You're going to win this thing this year. You know, that was my first year training there with him. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see you fight. So he's different than Hickson. When yeah, it comes to like completely crazy. different. Today, Hickson is way more light. Yeah, he's yeah. completely different today. Mm -hmm. Hickson is super light today. Yeah, but Harley used to be super light, friendly. Yeah, and. You know, I love Hoyle. I love him. I watch him compete and a big fan. So I'm there and he's like, okay, today we, we gonna, I'm going to train with you. First time I rode Hoyle, he's like, I'm like, I'm all excited. I'm like, shit, man, I'm going to rode Hoyle. So kind of my size, you know what I mean? A yeah. little taller than me. And, yeah. You know, not, Hickson is way bigger than me. Right. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, you know, I'm I'm gonna go. I do respect, but I, I think it's disrespect if you don't go hard. You know right. what I mean? If you try to, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I he's like, let's go, man. Give me everything you got, and let's go. I'm like, sounds good. So he taps me eight times in ten minutes. <laughs> it was like every. I remember he taps me right away. I'm like, oh shit, choke. I'm like, fuck. It's a choke I uh, even call Hoyle choke. <laughs> it's like... And this is, this, you're still a purple belt back then, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. But I'm a purple belt beating like... Top tier guys. Names. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it was a different purple belt. And uh, so I knew I was not going to be able to do much, but he tapped me eight times in, in 10 minutes, okay? And I remember he tapped me with this weird choke, okay? Hands not deep at all. I'm like, holy crap, okay. So go hard. And then I shake his hand and go hard, harder. Mm -hmm. and, tap, I'm like fuck. And then <laughs> shake hand and go harder. You know, my pace was getting higher. Right. And then tap, I'm like fuck. But not saying anything, you know right, what I right. mean? That's a disrespectful. Just thinking. Right. And I'm like, but it's going through my brain. Every time he taps you, you go harder. Mm -hmm. And he did not understand that. You know, it was a pace I sat in. I say, it's like, he's going to tap me, but I'm going to break a sweat on this guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> and I did. And in the end of the training, he's like, wow. Oh, my God. Now, definitely, you're going to win the Worlds. Really? Yeah. <laughs> And then, so I got a lot of experience there. You know, I trained with Saulo a lot because what happened, he the, it was beautiful. It was such like an amazing experience. I wish uh, Hoyle still do this today. Because Gracie Muay Thai, Muay Thai, Muay Thai is still a big team, mm -hmm. you know. But I think like they missed the leader, you know what I mean? Hoyle was the leader. And um, while it's a little, it's not a little, he's completely away from tournaments, you know what I mean? But it was like just amazing the way he used to lead everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. Such a like a, a general, mm -hmm. like everybody following and, and going hard. And, and I used to, he used to do this. We run and then he says, okay, this week it's five trainings, 10 minutes. You have five minutes to find your five partners. Then we are running. And then I go on you and say, hey, you have your first? And then you say, no. And then I say, you're my first. And then we are running. I go, Javi, do you have your second? And then he says, no. And then I say, so you're my second. And if you say, yes, I have a second. Do you have a third? No. And then you're my third. And then I go ah, find my second. Right, right, right. It was like a memory thing. You know, your five trainings, okay? Because right. you don't have time to, because you have to build your training, okay? And 
Saulo always used to come on me because I was small and I always used to be his middle train for his resting time. Right, his round off, so yes. to speak. Oh, see, yeah. So when he used to beat the crap out of me, <laughs> okay, he used to be my hard train, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Right. And fucks me over for my other three. <laughs> 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 and then, <laughs> and the first time he's like, he runs on me, he's like, you have your third. I'm like, yes. And he's like, I don't care, you might my third. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I did not understand. I says, oh man, what? Solo wants to train with me. Right, you're all proud. And yeah, I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit, I'm doing something. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then, so, got my role, my, my second role, my 30 comes. Holy shit. It was like no fun. <sighs> no fun. Solo is a mean guy. He's awesome. I love him, okay? Don't get me wrong. I, I love him. I inspire my game a lot on him. But he's a mean dude. You know, no... I think he forgot I was 132, 30 yeah. pounds. He just crushed the shit out of me, and I have to stop and say, So, my ribs, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fight. And he's going light. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. right. But and then I used to end up like 10 minutes, guy like crushed, beat up. He doesn't smile. He doesn't say anything. He just finish you. He doesn't teach you anything. Just crap. You know, it's like shit what the heck was that and and then on the other hand shanji used to call me a lot too and then you learn a lot he used to teach me things you know help me don't do this don't put your hand here when you want to do this i learned a lot from shanji over there he used to help me not hurt me at all nice like such a big dude and like gentle you know right, what i mean right. so gentle i love him I really, I really like, it's one of the guys I respect a lot and, you know, still fight, still 40 years, 41, something like that. He's still, yeah, and you top know, form on too. the top, yeah. you know, three. Right. He makes podio every time he fights. Mm -hmm. So, like, I learned a lot with him. Such an incredible, like, experience. And then, then with Saulo, was just like, okay, I learned the experience and I'm like, shut I got to stay away from him. I swear to God, I used to hide it. And he used to look it for me. And I used to go run like side to side to the other guys. And like, people was like, what, what the fuck are you doing here? Like, Dude, I'm hiding from Saulo. <laughs> and then they're like this. Oh, shit, he's looking for you. And he starts calling me like, Tiago, Tiago. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and then everybody says, he's over here. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> they ready out. And then he like kind of breaks a little smile. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, Saulo, please, man. Like, my fourth train is really important. Just don't beat me up. Because <sighs> I want to go to this black belt. I want to beat him up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It was nice. I, I, I have just a lot of uh, just good things about uh gracie umaita you know so then you were there for how long uh probably two years wow. i was and there then for two years you were a purple belt for those years and then i was a brown belt in the next year so you went to see hickson yes so hickson. always after the woods i used to go see hickson okay and then hickson promoted you to yes. brown yes yes wow fascinating it was nice harley was like well, in my purple belt okay like it was, I, it's, if you ask me something I regret, it was this, okay? Louise always say that too, right? Like, it's something I regret, you know, I, besides that, I live my life and I take it everything. It was like, I was so good at the purple belt, so good. And Holly used to say, okay, I want you to go with those black belts today. They're all your weight, you know, they're all current world champion. And I just get my job done mm -hmm. and then he goes on me he's like look um i think it was three weeks for the worlds he looks at me he's like um i want you to fight as a black belt and then i'm like what he's like yeah i want i want to promote you to a black belt and you fight at the worlds in three weeks as a black belt and i'm like oh shit i'm 21 i'm like oh no oh crap why he's like dude this guy here he's your way he's the world champion last year and you're doing awesome with him 
you, you're going to win this thing. I want to promote you because I we have only one now. And it's all about points, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If they got number one right. and number two, right. they got 10 and nine, right? It's all about points because back then, Gracie Maita used to fight for the world champion I see. as a team. And then I'm like, I freak out for a second, you know? I'm like, no, I don't think I can do this, you know? I have a, a, a goal in life. I was, I want to be a world champion of purple, brown, and black. Mm -hmm. And I already missed it blue, you know? Mm -hmm. There was nothing I can do about it because I was in in United States and the world was in Brazil. It's the CBJJ, the IBJJF, you know? And then he's like, and then I say, he's like, um, I don't think Hickson is going to agree with that. And then he's like, don't worry, I'll talk to Hickson. And then I kind of start getting out of, you know, things to say. And I say, it's like, Louise is not going to agree with that. Because Louise was my coach too. You know, I always say, it's like, Hickson Gracie and Louise is black belt. You know, both are my coaches. Mm -hmm. And then I say, Louise is not going to agree with that. And then he says, hey, you talk to Luis. I fuck, that was the worst two hours ever in my life going home. <sighs> and I'm like, holy shit. So get home, you know, went to the gym to train because it's still like 4 p.m. And go to the gym, you know, and when I saw Luis, I'm like, fuck, man, look what happened. Why do wants to promote me to a black belt? And Luis was a brown belt four stripe. And then... <clears throat> And I say, like, I can't get a black belt. I don't want it. He's like, dude, he's, the cool thing about my brother, he was always like, cool, you know what I mean? Was stuff mm -hmm. like that. He never put pressure. He's like, do whatever you want. Right. You know, he's like, it's your call, man. If you want, if he wants to do, give you a black belt, who I am to say something, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he's like, it's your call. I'm like, dude, I'm going to blame it on you. I, I'm pretty sure Hickson is not going to allow it. But, like, I say, I'm pretty sure, right? He's like, yeah, I don't think Hickson is going to allow that. But I'm, I don't want it, okay? But uh, would tomorrow, it just be for the competition? Then you go back no, to being purple? No, I was going to be a black belt. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 you yeah. can't do that. Yeah, Once he put that thing and I sign up for the Wolves, I can't go back. Forever. I'm a black belt forever and I skip brown belt. So, was that a thing that they did back then? Yeah. And the same year, Shaolin, Vitor uh, Shaolin, got his black belt like a couple weeks before the world. And he told me that to encourage me. He's like, look, man, in Avignon, this guy's getting a black belt because he's beating the a black belt. The black belt's in training and he's a purple belt. And they promote him to a black belt. Because purple to black. Purple to black. Bang. Wow. Shaolin went from purple to black. And the same year, he's like, he, he told me, like, Shaolin is getting his purple belt, his black belt. And I'm pretty sure this guy is going to win as a black belt. He's really good. I knew it, him because I was a purple belt. He was a purple belt. Mm -hmm. Jacques Carrier was a purple belt back then. But Vito Shaolin was a feather division. He was beating everybody in a purple belt like nothing. And Jacques Carrier was the same thing. We all purple belt at the same time. And then I'm like, fuck. So I went to home and talked to Luis and I says, I don't want it. And then Luis is like, it's your call. So next day, get to there. Holly was waiting for me. He's like, hey, um, how was the talk with uh, your brother? I'm like, ah. And then I was like, how was the talk with Hickson? And then he's like, Hickson uh, gives you the blast. You know, he says he's okay with him. Wow. And then I say, oh, shit. And then I look him in the eye. I still remember. I says, uh, but Luis doesn't want me to get a black belt. That's <laughs> why I think Hoyler doesn't like Luis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make sure Hoyler hears this and, and knows the true story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, they never <laughs> left my mouth before. <laughs> um, um, and not in the microphone. <laughs> but yeah, I regret that because you do. You do I, regret I, it. yeah, I could have win the awards that year, not that easily, black. but did you, you win know, a purple? Ah, uh, yeah, you did win a purple and easily. Yeah, yeah. And he went on. Um, he coached me. 
Hoyler. Yeah. And Luis was coaching me too, but he Hoyler was inside. And uh, after I won the awards, he's like, I told you, man. And you're going to see, He, I have a picture. He says, like, he says, you see, I told you you're going to win this easy. And now you're going to see Norachi wins on his division. And your division is supposed to fight. At Black. At Black. And Norachi went there and wins again. And then I'll, I was still happy because I was world champion. Course, you know yeah. what I mean? Sponsored by Hunt, Hunt, Hunter. Uh, do you guys still remember this logo? Vaguely, this yeah. I've Hunter. Seen, actually, I think I've seen pictures of it you was, in an old. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty famous back then. Was like I don't know, and uh, making magazine shit. But uh, yeah, Shaolin went down and won the awards as a black belt, and I was like, fuck. And today, I regret. I should have like take that. But uh, it went on my head like. God, I'm going to get my black belt before Luis. You know what I mean? Like, mm. that's not cool. Right. It's not, it's, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable with that. And I want to go to win the awards as a purple, brown, and black. Right. You know, everything was against my dream. And I'm like, fuck. But, yeah, I regret that. Interesting. Yeah, and then I, I went from, I got the black belt on the podium and then... After 30 days, I went to see Hickson, and then 12 months after was the Worlds again, right? I got my brown, and then 12 months was the the, the Worlds again, right? So, and then from July to December, I fought a bunch of tournaments as a brown belt, and I won all of them. I never lost as a uh, brown belt. And then Pan Ams came in April, and I won, and then stayed Brasileiro, and the Wolves again, and I won again. At Brown. At Brown. And then I just, I went up and down divisions, light, feather, and rooster, I just. Did they have open class back then? Yeah, but you can't fight. You know, back then, uh, today, you only can fight open division if you are light above. They don't allow black belts feather or like feather or rooster to fight the uh, absolute in the world's IBJJF. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. At black belt though. As a black belt. Right. right. Yeah. I they know, don't yeah. allow that because of it's just not fair. You know what I mean? You, and you might get hurt. So like back then was possible, but I never it had that desire to... to I knew it was going to be an impossible thing. When the Wolves is a black belt rooster, crap. I'm absolute. <laughs> what kind of food I'm eating. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. What else? Bring it on, Javi. Do you have any question for me? I remember, I, I don't remember all the details, but I, I remember it was a cool story. So you used to, you used to be part of a team that included some pretty famous names um, at one point, like a competition team, right? Yeah, that that was the hunter. That was hunter, team. right? Yeah. Okay. Was, uh, Shaolin. So, yeah. Who else was yeah. uh, I think Leticia was in. Hibero? No, Leticia. Yes. Uh, well, not at the time, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. A lot of big names was on there, you know, and Shakare was uh, Shaolin. Um, who else? couple guys because he used, they used to do that I don't know they still do today you know team like um, Coral team you know what I mean mm -hmm. like Kings team right Everyone's they don't do much better. but right. to back then used to have like 10 guys mm -hmm. you know one in the blue one in the purple one right. in the brown one in the black and uh, I was part of that for two years I think. and that was as, at purple belt yes that's when I met like Jacare Shaolin all those guys Seeing Jacare fight was like something pretty cool too. Like, I only saw. I, I mean, I've only seen Jacare's like black belt matches wow, for the most part. His, you can watch. You can see his matches on YouTube as a purple belt. Mm -hmm. You can see it's like that guy was a beast. Hmm. Pretty nice, good stuff, man. I have some, you know, like being around, you know. But w me and Luis, we never train with, you know, jumping around. You know, going here, going there. You yeah. know, I think I have a lot of friends, 
everywhere. I don't have that. Oh, this guy is. Or, yeah, I don't have that. I'm. I think I'm friendly with everybody. I think we gotta respect each other. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But at your school, there's no training outside your school. No, we try to keep it. Yes, within the school. Yes, with Javi being the exception. Javi, it's it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> it happens in life, you know. And uh, I'm I'm happy have Javi there. He teaches at my gym. Mm -hmm. I have a new gym in Barrington. Uh, how's Illinois. that? How's that going? Good? Pretty nice. nice. Pretty nice. Where's uh, that located in Barrington? It's right at Highway 14. Okay. It's yeah. almost no. downtown. It's, yeah, right it's not at, far from downtown. No. Okay. Barrington actually. It's a couple blocks out of downtown, but it's a it's a very nice place. Very calm. Very family. You know, mm -hmm. I got a lot of family stuff. I love train to compete. Mm -hmm. Barrington, it's it's more family thing. Right. And I still love to compete. I'm a competitor. I have this thing in my blood. I love compete. But over there, it's like a more family thing. I think the team is growing pretty fast. The gym is growing pretty fast. I'm trying to get the next door now. Oh, really? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm working on now. It's just being se seven months open. Seven months open, yeah. I think so, yeah. And Javi's teaching on on Fridays there. Like, it's funny. Javi has completely like a different like mentality of you know we come from Hickson. It's mm -hmm. but Javi breaks that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what, Javi now, can goes. You explain that. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Okay. First day, I Javi class. <laughs> Javi, all white belts, okay, just, you know, let's keep the basics, Javi, and I don't go to those classes much, it's not because I try to get an hour off, whatever, it's to make them comfortable to mm -hmm. not have my image at the gym, you know I what see. I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I might get there, people get intimidated, I don't know if Javi got intimidated, you know what I mean? Like, I try to let them very comfortable, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so we have cameras okay, in the gym, and uh, I, I can watch the, the gym from here. Sure, okay? yeah. So <laughs> he's holding up his phone for those that you know can't see. So, obviously, <laughs> you know, how he goes there, and I, okay, today we're gonna learn crucifix. <laughs> no, no, you've misremembered. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I wish I could have talked on the phone like Javi. <laughs> on the camera, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> Little Ple speaker. Please. <laughs> <laughs> no crucifixes today. Our conversation. Okay. <laughs> and it was something like that, right? It was crucifix. It was ankle locks. Yes. <laughs> ankle locks. Oh, my God. No, I, it was worse. <laughs> okay, it was worse. It was ankle, foot lock. It was not ankle yeah. lock. It was the straight foot lock. Straight foot lock, okay. And then I'm like, holy crap. They're going to hate Actually, they love it, and yeah. and Javi gets them the white belts, a bunch of white belts, and they do. I'm watching the camera. They do crucifix a high level black belt position, <laughs> <laughs> and I see those white belts hopping over like the head, smashing head, and I'm like, oh. and then in the picture after he posted his unique pictures, you know, only Javi yeah. can take. And, uh, and then I see the comments in the picture. Oh, it's a class we love it, Javi. I'm like. Shit, you know, like we rise in beings. Javi gets then and throw a filet mignon. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God damn, Javi. <laughs> and then I went to Louise one day, and Louise, how is Javi's teaching there? I'm like, Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to do experiment. <laughs> <laughs> the experiment seems to be going well so far, and then like he's like. Louise is very interesting on that. Like, how did that that going? I'm like, actually, it's going very well. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, really? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, he's pulling it out. Let's see, it's funny. I was like, God damn it, Javi. Louise had me. Uh, Louise had me teach a couple of classes at uh, at Schomburg while they were down in Brazil, and uh, I asked him, you know, because because like, if you don't give me like a direction. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to tend to favor the stuff that either I'm working on personally Mm -hmm. or, you know, like uh, maybe I'm not the best guy to be showing you triangle chokes, but I'm a pretty good guy to be showing you, you know, the crucifix, ankle locks or things like that. So, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to cater to my strengths. And, uh, and Louise asked me, uh, or I asked Louise, I'm like, well, you know, when you're, when you're down in Brazil, what do you, what do you want me to show? He's like, Mount. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i'm like uh, okay okay like uh, I, I can do this okay <laughs> so uh so yeah so uh we we split up the classes amongst the the different students uh donnie taught most of the uh most of the evening classes uh-huh. and he focused heavily not exclusively but heavily on mount escapes uh-huh. so during the noon classes i focused real heavily on mount offense and and it was funny because i'm like Man, I don't have the best collar chokes, but I'm going to convince this class that I have the best collar right. chokes. So, uh, so yeah, we went through collar chokes and arm bars and how I transitioned to the back. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I may have thrown a crucifix in there off the back transition. I may not have. We'll never know because <laughs> there's no cameras at that section. <laughs> but, yeah, no, like, so uh, I say it all the time. You know, it, it's like for me, the, the, the way I was, uh, brought up and, you know, obviously I, I have a different background in, uh, in grappling as a whole, but it's like, you know, I, I don't approach beginner positions the same way because of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not like, I th- it's not like I think that, um, like crucifix isn't complicated to me, mm-hmm. you know, like, like for me getting into and using the crucifix isn't that much harder than getting both hooks in or establishing mount, you know, in fact, in many ways, I have a harder time establishing and controlling somebody in mount than I do, you know, from crucifix or something like that. So like, I just, you know, it's like, I know Tiago is going to go over, you know, like side control pressure, which I'm still trying to develop that, you know, and, and, and that crushing mount pressure and, and they're going to get all of that so much better than me from him right <laughs> so it, 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 i think it's it, i think it's most beneficial that i teach the stuff that you know it's not like he doesn't know it but right. that's that's my strength and it's what i use in tournament and, and and whatnot so and that usually ends up being like the stuff that people are asking me about anyhow mm-hmm. so uh so yeah like my classes uh at barrington mm-hmm. over the, over the you know period of months now have focused on uh, a lot of crucifix uh back attacks in general um we've done a lot of omoplata and that's all just you know in my game, right. the way that I and the way that I grab. Of course, actually, only a little bit of that. A little but bit, yeah, yeah. We we I kind of started off on that just because I'm like, uh, does anyone want to learn this? <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, like like especially when it's getting near like fight to win or one of the other big competitions mm-hmm. where where they're gonna be fighting against guys that are gonna be hitting them with ho- foot locks and mm-hmm. heel hooks and stuff like that. Especially the higher belts, like I'll I'll review that stuff with them to make sure that they're yeah. you know familiar with it. We don't want anyone getting tapped by something from a lack of familiarity right. or, or anything like that. That's always the worst way to go out where it's like, oh, I didn't see that coming because, you know, we don't focus on it. Mm-hmm. Well, let me give you a little taste of it right what, now. Right? What do I tell you when when you go teach? When I says, you asking me that, right? Mm-hmm. So what do you want me to teach? What do I say? Right. What you're good at? <laughs> I says, whatever you want. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> I interpret it as what I'm good at. <laughs> right. Well, it's good. It's good. I mean, I teach a lot of, I teach the beginner's class at Maneco's. So on Mondays and uh, Thursdays, six o'clock class, but I teach what, you know, Maneco created a curriculum for us and he wants to go over this, this, and this and that. And, you know, if it's, if for whatever reason, he's not able to teach the, you know, no gi class, he'll let me teach that as well. And then I can go over whatever, you know, foot locks and all the fun stuff that, you know. Right, I like to do all the fun stuff. stuff. I call, I, like I call it the fun stuff, but you know, <laughs> it's all fun to me. But you know, it's like a break in the in the game, like you know, arm bars, triangles, you know, mound, side control, scarf. You know, you know, all those positions mm-hmm. are great and all. But you know, every once in a while, you know, going into an ashi position, you know, is nice to kind of get familiar with that position. Right. You know, from the straight ankle and then double. I haven't even gotten to double outside ash. I haven't gotten to any of those positions yet. We're just trying to learn. I haven't ash. gotten it yet. I haven't right. gotten there yet. But you know, just to see the guys, like, oh my god, though, this. What do I? You know, this is a cool. Like they're not even familiar with that position. Mm. It's right. Like just yeah. this position, you should know. You know, it's, yeah. a basic it's so for much me. to teach, so much to show. So it's much. like people start going to jujitsu. They like, oh, when I'm gonna get my belt? Why? Yeah, belt is just like. 
we always say belts is just to hold the gi, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you, you got to worry about the, the knowledge, mm -hmm. you know. Bell was never, you know, in IBJJF, I am a fourth degree black belt, right? So I just received my my certification. <clears throat> but I was a fourth degree black belt two years ago. But I pay the stripes, whatever, the IBJJF charge. You know, it's nice to have the certification. Sure. You know, and but in my belt, I'm a third degree. Okay. It's and then people are like, oh, congrats, you know, fourth degree, awesome, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, I make sure everybody knows, like, it's not just, you know, I'm a fourth degree. I got to wait for Hickson to put it out. Right. You know, in the papers, I'm four, but in the belt, I'm three. Mm -hmm. You know, Hickson was never about, you know, belt or stripes. Right. I think the first stripe Louis got in his belt was... And as a black belt, <laughs> I, I don't think Luis ever have a stripe. Me and him, like it was. And didn't all, it take a long time for him to get stripes, like on your uh, black belts? Didn't Hickson, like not Hickson do it? sees your belt like turning white if it's a brown, yeah. then he's g gonna start talking to you like, "Oh, how long you have in your brown belt? Five years." And then he's like, "Oh, okay, you know what I mean." Like, mm. it's it's about the knowledge in the end of sure. the day. You know, right. yeah. but you were on a you were on a faster path because you competed so much. Yeah. They didn't want to hold you back. It exactly. Right. It was different. I was when when we start LCCT. The goal was like, how are we gonna put our name there out there? Okay, and one was you know selling Hickson right like oh we Hickson Grace we Hickson Grace. And the other one was like building our name, right? Mm -hmm. So, and me and Louise, we never, you know, we got here without need to sell that. You know what I mean? Like we did our own thing. You know, I'm not going to name people, but I know a couple guys do that. You know, but... Play off, play off the Hickson name. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, and then I see Louis says, like, I'm like, I love to compete. I'm going to put our name in there. He's like, okay, so that's the deal. You compete and I teach. I see. And then that's what we did. And then I was the competitor. I was the leading team competing, traveling all over with, you know, the guys wants to compete as a purple belt. And then brown belt and black belt. That's pretty much, if you go to Rio, everybody knows our name. Because, you know, that's how you're going to get your name out there. Right. Competing, it's one. You know, competing for sure, it's one. The other one is continue to do a good job. Right. You know, it's longer path. You know what I mean? Example, um, if Ibushesha today opens a gym, his own gym, how many people is going to be outside of the door waiting for him to open? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? different than a guy that doesn't compete but he's awesome black belt people don't even care if he's a good instructor he's the guy you know what I mean right I went to some seminars man and famous people and I get them like holy crap I can't believe this dude don't even know how to teach a position you know what a crappy seminar and wow look at this guy he's you know what I mean yeah, it yeah. doesn't mean you are a world champion 10 times, you're going to be an awesome instructor. Right, right. You know, like... Yeah, I'm not going to name names, but I know somebody fairly recently actually went to a, went to a, a very, very well-known black belt seminar and, uh, you know, needed help with the technique. And it was very clear that the guy's like, well, this is how I do it, and I can't quite understand why you're just not awesome enough to do it. Wow. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like this is a guy that hasn't had to break that down a lot for himself. Like, he's just got it. Natural. Right. Yeah, know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and that's probably, like, that's what, like, I think I'm probably a better teacher for the fact that I'm not, like, a natural at mm -hmm. things. You know, like, it takes me a lot of, you know, like, oh, show me that again, show me that again. 
crap, show me it again, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I have to hear it so many times mm-hmm. and, and I have to really review it and study it and right. make sure I understand it. And then you got guys that are just like, I've seen that once and I can do it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to explain to you right. when you're struggling what's really important. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I can very much relate to that. Most, I, I'm lucky because most of the seminars I've been to have been with guys that actually are very good teachers, mm-hmm. but I, I've definitely, yeah, I've definitely encountered that elsewhere. Like I, I can say, like, I think I'm a good instructor, okay, but like I'm by far not, you know what I mean? Like, oh, top guy instructing, teaching, you know. Like, if I compare myself with Luis, fuck, Luis is an amazing instructor. He will break a position, like, insane, perfect, and make it everybody understand. That's the cool thing, you know. Luis is one of the best instructors I ever see. I've been in so many people, you know, being around. And, right. and like, by far, so far, like, Luis is one of the best instructors I ever see. Like, my classes are good. I'm a good instructor. Yeah, they're, they're very good, and, and everyone misses Tuesday sweeps. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'll go there sometimes. I have more Fridays now, a little better timing. But anyway, like, I, I consider myself a good instructor, but Luis is a master. Like, that kid teaching, it's like... I love it. I'm a black belt and I stop and I watch even a beginner position. I watch and I see some blue belts not paying attention. They just want to, I have a gun, I shoot the dude. <laughs> you yeah, know. I know what you mean. And they don't know what they're missing. Yes. Yeah. Luis, like, they, a lot of people, they don't know what they have in hand. Luis is just like out of the space teaching. It's just... I, I got so mad at him when I first met him too. Incredible. Who? Luis. Why? Okay, so let me let me set this up. I, I think I may have told this before, but so I lived in the area where the gym is for a number of years now. Okay. Like I bought my house, which is roughly ten minutes from the gym, back in two thousand and three. Okay. Okay. So that's fifteen years now. Um I don't remember exactly when Luis moved in to um, – because you guys used to be in Tri-Balance originally and not, then it moved yes, next door to Tri-Balance. Yes. But, you know, Luis has been in the area for a while. Okay, let's just say that. And uh, I had no idea it was there for years, for literally years. So a friend of mine tells me, hey, I'm training – I'm training jujitsu now. I'm like, oh, cool. Where are you training jujitsu? And he, he tells me it's like right over in the shopping center by Tri-Balance Yoga. I go – who are you training jujitsu with? He's like, oh, we got a Hickson Gracie black belt that teaches there. His name's Luis. I'm like, no, you don't. Like, like <laughs> I, if there was a Hickson Gracie black belt, like <laughs> living ten or teaching ten right. minutes from my house, I think I would know. Right, right. Okay. Right. He's like, no, no, it's there for real. I'm like, is it brand new? No. Well, okay, hold on. Like, I'm gonna go check this out. And sure enough, I drive by, and it's tucked. You know, at the time, tucked away in a little corner. Mm. No sign on the on the building that says like martial arts or jujitsu or yeah. anything. And I'm like, this is a big gym, and and we got a Hicks and Gracie black belt living and teaching ten minutes from my house, right. and I don't know about it. Like. Who's in charge of their social media? <laughs> <laughs> nobody was back then. Yeah, nobody was. Oh, but man. you know, so, that's what I'm saying. Like, we try to build our thing. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but yeah, but social was, media, you, it's better today. True, truly, one of the best kept secrets. You know, like <laughs> unfortunately, you know, like one of the best kept secrets. <laughs> um, well, and, how did you? How did you guys get involved with the UFC fighters? Like, how did that all? Oh, like Rothwell and them and yeah, Julian. Well, I mean, like, um, well, like, yeah, you got Julian. Uh, you, I mean, know, you, got, you guys have a pretty. Pretty, there's a lot of UFC fighters. Yeah, we trained. have a couple. Um, and, and Bellator as well? Yes, yeah. yes. But, um, I mean, like, because you were just jujitsu, right? Yes. But what happened is right now, it's like, it's hard for you to find one coach for mixed martial art, good in everything. I see. Right? So they have to specific go for something. I'm going to train with this jujitsu guy. I'm going to train with this Muay Thai guy. And then I'm going to train with this wrestling guy, whatever, you right. know, kickboxing, whatever it is. So uh, I'm 
in 2000, I used to teach in 2011 or 10, 2010, I teach at Duke Rufus for six yeah. months. Okay. And then I work with Anthony Pettis. Um, uh, Sergio was just start fighting back mm -hmm. then. Um, uh, Eric Koch. Mm -hmm. Um, who else was there? Uh, a couple other guys. So we start training them. Ben was there too, but Ben, I actually Ben left already. Ben was not with Duke, right? So, and then everybody, the coach, I want to see you fight. I want to see you. Hello. I have one MMA fight, one pro. No amateur. Nobody wants to fight me back then in amateur in 2006. And then the guy's like, I'm going to have to bump you to pro because nobody wants to fight you in amateur. And I'm like, okay, well, bring it on. So, and then I was at Duke and then everybody's like, coach, why you don't fight? Fight, we want to see you fight. And Duke has his show. And I says, okay, I'll fight. And then that's when I met Ben. Me and Luis, we met Ben. In that fight. So ben who? Ben Rothwell. Rothwell. Oh, Ben Rothwell. Okay. And then I was helping Anthony and those guys. Um, Pet Berry was there too uh, at Duke back then. And then I met Ben in that fight. And then I was leaving pretty much roof already because they want a full time structure there. And Is that then, where Daniel? Uh, yes, Vandalay yeah, okay. is there yeah. now. And back then, I could not be there full-time because I was teaching at other places, too. And then I says, hey, man, I'm going to leave. You know, you need a full-time instructor, you know, and good luck. Daniel is an awesome guy. I really like that kid. Super good guy. Um, so, and then I left, but and I, we met Ben in that fight. And then Ben's like, hey, you guys want to come, you know, at my gym for a seminar? His gym was now open for the public, was just open. It was a little gym, a private gym, just for him to train. And then I went there, and then he saw the potential, you know. He's like, dude, let's open a gym. And then we pretty much rented this space next door. And then I started teaching jiu-jitsu there full-time with him, teaching stand-up and training him. And then it came Juliana, Peña, it came Yay Rodriguez, you know, we help a little bit of Michael Chiesa, Ricardo Lamas, you know. Ricardo still go training with Luis, but he has his camp. He doesn't do the camp with us. He do his camp with the, I forgot, his team. Top Notch. Um, top Notch and the other guys. I can't remember. Right. What and he's actually teaching at the UFC gym in Naperville now. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I think he owns that gym. Mm -hmm. Nice kid, super good kid, hard work. And... Um, and then that's how it starts. Like mm -hmm. then everybody start knowing our name for jujitsu coaches. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. You want to learn jujitsu for MMA? These guys are from Hickson. And then it took a little while because you know Ben started doing really well. He finished Josh Barnett. He first he finished Mitrion mm -hmm. with this gogo -go choke. You know, Luis. It's a Luis thing. It's like, Luis, grab your neck, your chin, you're done. Yeah, you got to train with him like this. to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's freaking ridiculous. So, and then Ben finished. Uh, um, Josh Barnett after Mitrion. Josh Barnett. And then after, no, Mitrion first. Right, right. And then after that, Josh Barnett. And things was doing well. We help. We train a lot. Juliana. Juliana do her camp with us too. Mm -hmm. Super hard work girl. Like, you tell her, like, jump, she's like, how high? Yeah. You know what I mean? You tell her to do anything, she just do harder as if she can. So easy to train her or Ben, like, they go. They do. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like, that's good fighters to train. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fun. It's like, good, let's go. Good sessions every day. But, yeah, like... UFC is cool. It's it, it's a it's a it's a nice experience. Yeah, it works. It's fun. It's you get there. It's a week. A lot of pressure. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. Media, all kind of shit, and this and that, and weigh-ins and right. It's fun. It it's fun. We're happy. We I'm not focused too much on MMA. I'm focusing 
in my gym now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And start competing again so I can, my students can see me. And my daughter's growing up. I have a five years old daughter. She asked me, Daddy, when are you going to fight? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, you missed, you were going to fight at Worlds this year. Yeah, and then I hurt my knee three, three weeks ago. Oh, like, man. somehow, I don't know, even know how. And my daughter's like, oh, daddy, I want to see you compete. I want to, that's why I just, hey, you know what? That's easy. I love compete. It's just, poof, fire is on. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, what, what weight would you compete at? Uh, light feather. That's my weight. Yes. Wow. You get, man. Yeah, well, you're, you walk around 150? Yeah, that's 150, 155 yeah. max. Right I mean, now. I walk around 135, so it's for me. I'm, I'm <laughs> You're I'm right there. there. I'm there right now. I don't have to cut any weight. I eat no. whatever I want. No, I don't cut it normally. I just do a really nice diet, diet and I yeah. take my, my cardio to extremely work. And, yeah. you know, I don't row as hard as before because that's really when you get hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I drill. I get in important positions. Mm -hmm. Try to drill what they're doing. Right. You know what I mean? It's more training. You, you know. will be masters. Are you masters two or three? I'm master two. Two. Yeah. Yes. And um, but next year I'm planning to fight the adults, the worlds. Are you really? Yeah, I think I can do it. I have no injuries, no bad thing. It follows me. You know what I mean? Right. This shit comes from nowhere. Right. And. Um, I didn't even know how I hurt. I oh. think it was because of the triathlon. I pull a lot of muscles into I my see. hamstring and my back. Yeah, yeah. And then start aggravating to my knee. Yeah, yeah. That's why the, the, the physiotherapist told me. But it's nothing like serious. Right, You right. know, it's not something. Not like a torn. No, LCL yeah. Like that. It's not like, oh, how did you hurt? I don't know. Every day was getting worse, worse, yeah, worse, yeah. worse, worse, worse. And then I went to Brazil. I was like barely training because I was hurting so much just to walk. Right. And I'm like, shit, I can't compete like that. No. But, you know, I prefer fight 10 minutes than six minutes. I agree. I'm 100% with you yeah, on that. No. I'd rather fight 10 than six. I, yeah, I'd rather, rather my game, time to my work. game start getting better after two, three minutes. That's how I am. You it know. takes me a while to kind of get yeah. the to warm up. It does. I just, it's just <laughs> no, I that's how it is. I don't know. In two thousand, when I moved to California and I opened a gym in Bay Area, San Francisco, I say that was two thousand fourteen. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna compete again. You know, get my name out there. And then I went Dallas Open, Atlanta Open, but Vegas Open, California, uh, Honey, uh, Long Beach Open. And I all did it in adult life at, and I won all pretty much. Wow. And I'm like, crap, I do better on on the adults 10 minutes than in the masters. Like, hurry up, it's a minute to go. I'm like, holy shit, what happened to the other I minutes? Know, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Why they have, like, yeah. mine are like five minute I, matches. I like, think, come on. I, I think the logic is that we're old and we don't have the stamina for 10 minute matches. But, I don't think that's but true. Everyone I, <laughs> everyone I talk to is like, yeah, I wish we had more time. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say everyone. Yeah. Almost everyone. I mean, there's I some, talk there's to. some small. I think I just did. I did a new breed at my first purple belt. Was, I think it was a four minute match. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Am I gonna, that sounds correct. Four minutes? Like, come on. Maneka was so pissed about that whole thing. Dude, like five minutes freaks me out. Master 3 right now, I think it's five minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, it's Master 3. That's it, what I meant. It, I don't know. It's, I, it's, I'm planning to fight the Pan Ams. Um, we see how it goes uh, in the Masters. But after that, I'm gonna fight a couple before in the adults to see how it goes. If I feel good, I go to the go to the adult. But if I go to adult in April for the pen, I wanna go to the rooster. Really? Yeah. I'll make it. It's got that rooster in the gi is you gotta be walking around like what, one twenty five and a half? Well, I gotta be walk one twenty six. One twenty six and a was it one twenty seven and a half? Yeah, one twenty seven and a half. And a half. The half counts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's brutal. I, I I mean I know I could probably make that weight clearly. I, see, I know you could. Yeah, I, I know I for too, you, you too. You just gotta stop the Burger King and. The, I, okay, I'm gonna say this again. I, on I'm air. gonna pull your Facebook you, here. You, 
that's <laughs> post comp meals. He, yeah, look, he stopped I, I eating. He, food, he stopped yeah. eating those crap like probably three weeks before the wolves. No. <laughs> I'm yes, very disciplined dude. on my diet. You can ask him. He sees <laughs> me is, all the time. He is disciplined. Yeah, no, it, but. Um, Master I'm next not, year. I'm not convinced We're I can going. make rooster until I do it, <laughs> but I've gotten pretty close. When I weighed in, because um, I was being extremely strict leading up to Masters Worlds, uh, and uh, I was a little worried because I'm always worried about the scale. Mm -hmm. When I weighed in on the test scale, I didn't take my sweatshirt off. Right. Or, I mean, I took my shoes off and my hat. That's it. Um, and I was... Uh, 138.5 with with all my gear on. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, this is no problem. I think I weighed in under 137 pounds mm -hmm. for the actual mm -hmm. scale. Okay. And that's with the gi on. And my gi is about, my gi and my belt is like 3.5 or something like yeah. that. So like I was already down to like right. 134, 133 ish mm -hmm. in that range. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't personally know if I can make Rooster, but like I'm not that far off. I'll make it. But you can. The problem is that for me, if I go to Rooster, there's no one for me to fight. There's no Master Three Rooster. Is is like yeah, there's no one there. For right. the, the Masters, I don't think you you know no. you don't need it because it's not you're gonna probably have two fights. Right. Well, right. Master, this this time there was ten people in my division at Purple. I, at, at what? At uh, World at Rooster Master, master yeah. Three Light Feather. Oh, okay, guys, that's what yeah. I'm saying. That's oh, yeah. enough. That's rooster. three, rooster, that's like three matches. Yeah. That's yeah, good. Life, Life Feather for me at Brown Belt was 12 guys. Yeah. But I did look just, just to see, not because I thought I could make it. I was just checking it out. There were only, if I recall, two guys yeah, signed rooster. up in Rooster. Yeah. So, yeah, that wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't be a very... For the adults, I need to be in a Rooster. Yeah, for adults, maybe, yeah. yeah the, the, I, I think assume so? it's a much more stacked yeah. division at that point. That's yeah. why my jujitsu really flows the different... Really? Yeah, I like it. Let's put this way. For me to beat on a rooster, I need to keep my, my cardio so, so high. That means what? Oh. I can fight forever. My endurance <laughs> is going to be insane. You know what I mean? If, if I do a lot of cardio, when I done the woods at the adult, okay, I have five fights. When I done the woods in that year, I could have five more. Really? I have to pick the final guy up, like help him. And I was not even sweat. Wow. You know, and I literally can fight like 10 more fights like that. That's how, how insane was my cardio. Wow. Like because. And that's all from the biking. From bike run and swim. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Ima because today people do more preparation. You know what I mean? They prepared yourself more to, like, today a fighter just don't spar, right? They do conditioning training. Sure, they right. do the swimming. They do all kind of stuff. Why not for jiu-jitsu? Why the jiu-jitsu people don't do that? Why Nick Diaz can fight forever? Why Nate Diaz can fight forever? They fight five rounds in the same pace from round one to round five. Right. And that's not because they're beautiful. It's because of the triathlon. You know right. what I mean? Right. Like, it, if you can be doing hard exercise for five hours straight, nonstop as a race, can you fight good for 25 minutes? Piece of cake. You know what I mean? If you can do a, a Olympic triathlon, two hours and a half, hard, because when you jump in the water, it's not chin, chin, cha, cha. Right. You are swimming hard. Yeah. When you jump on a bike, you are pedaling hard every second. Hard, 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 hard. And when you go for a run, you better have energy for that. You know what I mean? And you go hard. Yeah. So if you can do that for two hours and a half, three hours, what is 25 minutes fighting? Right, right. You know, in jiu-jitsu, you don't go 10 minutes super hard. Look at those fights for the adults. I know. Five minutes is chilling out. I know. You know what I mean? Sometimes seven minutes is chilling out. And then they give their life three minutes. Right. You know what I mean? To get advantage or whatever. Yeah. If I can't put that formula in my body again. Right. 
you know, I'm going to break those guys in five minutes and I still have five more minutes to do whatever I want to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's what they do. They jump and they stay in that game. They don't want to sweep you. They don't want to finish you. They just want to keep in there, keep in there. And then three minutes, and let me get mean. my advantage yeah. and let me hold you for two minutes now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like nobody likes pressure, man. Understand that thing. Nobody likes pressure. The day you roll with, hey, with me, and I say, let's go 10 minutes. And I'm going to give you five minutes to warm it up and have fun. Right, Mavi? Yeah. And then I, I, the next five minutes is going to be my. Yeah, I've, I've definitely experienced this. <laughs> Man, I wish I was not injured right now. <laughs> you know, God, I want to feel it. I, I, I saved know. you a little bit because, you know, he doesn't have his gear with him. But... <laughs> If he wants to, we could probably still have him just give you a little pressure. Oh. <laughs> Your upper body's still good. My yeah, upper body's that's great. That's My body's fine. It's just, just a foot. Just a foot's a little messed up. <laughs> oh, it's good. Yeah. No right. gives awesome. oh, oh, yeah. Man, no I'll bring it he, on. He doesn't need Give me a couple more it. weeks. I'll no. come back, see if people like the interview. Oh, yeah. All my crap, all my crap talk. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you guys did not ask me very... I thought we were going to like, ask all the hard-hitting questions. Yes, no. don't ask me. Like no. the, I told you in the beginning, I have no filter. Don't ask. No. No. <laughs> it's not what we do here. It's not what we do. Just talk. Just talk bullshit. I know. And then next time you come in, you know, another year from now, took it forever to get on here. Hey, huh? hey, hey. <laughs> made it happen. Dude, he, it happen. He, he, oh, yesterday was a bad day. I apologize. No, no worries. It was like after, you know, I have a friend of mine I brought from Brazil. I got him a job. And, you know, like, he's an amazing black belt from me and Louise and super nice guy. And he's here now, work with us. So I got his job interview yesterday. And so he, you know, helped me a little bit with more money, too. <laughs> so, and then I said, crap, Javi, I can't make it, dude. And then he's like, oh, no worries. I'm like, Sunday, anytime you guys want free, whatever. It's you, you pick the, the time. I'm free all day. And, Later on was my brother's birthday too, yesterday. Yeah, that, and then I'm like, on the car, Javi, I'm glad we did not make today <laughs> because I completely forgot my brother's birthday. Wow. We would have given yeah. a shout out on the podcast. Course, it would have worked yeah, out okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sleepy. My wife was like, get your ass ready. We're going to Louise's birthday. I'm like, oh, shit. It's uh, today. <laughs> 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 oh poor Luis I hope he's not listening to that uh, of course he's listening he's our number one fan <laughs> he's, 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 he's so fun Luis is fun he's I couldn't awesome. believe when I when I saw his videos on Instagram I thought they were sped up like oh I no no he's that fast <laughs> and then when I see him in person I'm like holy fuck he is that fast yeah. it is so Luis is a ninja dude it's I, incredible wow. to watch live like seeing it on in video, you're like, oh, okay, that's pretty fast, man. Yeah. And I, I think I'm like, because I, because your imagination goes, they probably spit up the video. It's something's, something's camera trick. <laughs> no, then when I saw him when I visited and I saw him do, I'm like, what the fuck did I just see? That was incredible to watch. So I have a friend in San Francisco. He's our black belt, okay, and he's a I'm our black belt and a big fan, okay. Actually, his name is Chris. Sanford, he's was he's on the first Ultimate Fighter house, super cool, super cool guy. So one day we're having like a group conversation, and this guy was asking like, "What is the difference?" Because they have me there in class every day because I open a gym there, right? So and but we always talk about Louise, and they never met Louise. I brought Louise like probably six months after the gym was open. And then this guy's like, what is the difference between Louise and Tiago? Because they're the same size, you know yeah. what I mean? And, uh, and then he's like, okay, that's a great question. Uh, let me think a second. And then he says, like, okay, I know I have a perfect example for you. And then we all sit on a dinner table. We outside, I think, eating some pizza, whatever it is. And then he's like, okay, so when you go train with Louise, it's like... Um, you're drowning, okay? And you can't hold it. Nothing to hold yourself. The dew is everywhere, and you're drowning alive there and every time on your neck, and you can't see the dirt. And then the guy's like, oh, okay, so what about uh, Tiago? And then the guy says, like, to, with Tiago, it's like you feel like you bury 
Upside down alive. The <laughs> <laughs> more you dig, the better it gets or worse. <laughs> your games are totally different than Completely. Yeah. Wow, that's We learn from the same source. That's that's the beauty about jiu-jitsu. Is, you gotta it? you gotta have your style. You have your own style. You know what I mean? So fast. And we do have all the basics, sure. you know what I mean? The yeah. foundation, the same, but the the you know I pick more control, I mm. pick more establish. Mm. Uh, I'll make you tap. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna ask me, like, please tap me. Yeah. You know, please, please end this suffering thing. Louise is gonna tap you like <laughs> Like a ninja, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the that's difference. Awesome. That's fucking awesome. Well, you'll you'll have to come on by sometime and check out the Barrington. Oh, no, so, I came yeah. here. Now he has to I visit. Will, definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. Uh, yes, sir. Where can people get buried alive by you? <laughs> <laughs> um, at Barrington, Illinois. LCCT um, Barrington. LCCT Barrington. Uh, no, LCCT BJJ Barrington dot com. Okay. And um, what is you on Facebook and social yeah, media? Yeah, Tiago Vega. Right? I do have Instagram Vega LCCT. Okay. Um, but uh, the school, the school has an Instagram, and that's where most of the stuff that yes, that uh, you know, like video clips yeah, yeah. And, and whatnot. Typically, that's where where we post that stuff these okay. days. Awesome. So, and that's uh, that's the same as the uh. That's what you call it, right? Yes. It's, uh, LCCT BJJ Barrington. BJJ Barrington, yes. Well, yes. Tiago, I really appreciate you coming in, man. Thank you, it's brother. It's been awesome, man. I'd like Sorry, to the delay was kind of like, he's always like message me like, hey, can we go this week? And I'm like, no, I have a triathlon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have this. No, I have a seminar. No, I have that. Well, but I love it. That was the first time I'm on a podcast. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I just broke the virginity right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you did a great job. And <laughs> I like it. Yeah. yeah. Just I think it was not bad. If anytime you invite me, I'll come, you know. Awesome. Absolutely. Yes, right. and then I'll bring my gear and I'll show you some secrets. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, appreciate it, man. We'll Thank see you guys. You brothers. Bye. Yes, sir. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Very Hard to Submit. Go to VHTSNY.com and check out their kimonos, compression gear, and apparel. This is a brand we are excited to be supported by. Their gear is high quality with a clean design. Go to VHTSNY.com and see for yourself. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. For more information about Grappler Union Podcast, you could visit us at our website at GrapplerUnion.com. You can follow us on Instagram at Grappler Union. Please like us on Facebook. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And all of our episodes are available on our YouTube channel. Say what? Be sure, be sure to subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe to all that shit. <laughs> um... You gotta do another take, right? Oh.